Awkward beginnings. <laughs> Awkward beginnings. Welcome uh, to episode 23 of the Tap Haven podcast. Sad ads. We try whiskey games. Fun. Awesome. And uh, just have a good time. How, how has y'all's week been going so far? How is the July 4th week starting out for y'all? You want to oh, go so first? No weekend. No weekend. Is weekend not included then. No, I'm just considering all of the week, but I mean, it's the July 4th week now, so. Y'all, y'all, what's up? I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh, no. Me too. I have been working on some kind of content for the past four days to like 10, 11 o'clock. Well, that's right. Is it complete? And then, no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I so long mm. story short, I'm not good at this aspect of my job. And I know this. I'm just not a lesson planner, right? Yeah. But this portion of the grind is very focused on lesson writing. So I'm having to put in like extra hours just to keep up. Oh no. So, my weekend is going to be more lesson planning. Holy shit. (laughs) I'm laughing because it's kind of scary. Um, But no, I have my goal is my goal is almost done. I have like two more lessons to write, and then I've already written three, the three. And I just need to get them polished down to what they need to do and then get them past my manager and then present them. And then I'm washed of them. So I'm, I'm in the trenches, but I can see the light. That's where I'm at. Now you have one other big life event that we know of. What's that? Boxes. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Dang Guys, it. I haven't even finished building it. Oh, no, but you gotta, you gotta tell the people what's coming. So, Guys, I made I'm building a monster. Well, at least I'm trying to build a monster. I feel like I'm getting close. Um, so I just recently got all the parts for my build. Um, it's in a fractal um, North ATX case. And to not bore you with the specs, it's a 4080 uh, Super and a... 47 49 50 79 50 79 50 3d gpu sorry cpu with a lot of ram so this thing's gonna yeah, this how much th- how much ram are you doing again like 64 64 that's a good six, amount of ram. Six, 60 64 <laughs> because the current system i'm on, I'm on has 12 <laughs> so I never want to be bottlenecked ever again. <laughs> That's oh, fair. I don't so know that I've ever needed, needed more than 32 yet. With audio stuff, crazy you can get stuff. there. With audio, you, you can get there. You can. You just have to then, want to do it. It's pretty difficult. <laughs> you have to try. Uh, there's this one video game that I've played uh, very rarely, and it takes up to like 32 <laughs> gigs if you have it. Yeah, I have 64. Uh, it's called Star Citizen. Shut up. <laughs> oh, um, I did not build a Star Citizen machine. I don't think for anybody all... can build a Star Citizen machine yet. Actually, if you have the, like the latest stuff, actually, they, they did update it with to use uh, dynamic rendering Anthony, and stuff like that in Vulcan. So now it, it actually Anthony. Runs. Anthony, it's a big deal. It used to chug I, it on everyone. I'm computer. not saying it's not. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh God! So no, I did not build a start a citizen machine. Nobody can, but this is going to be my forever, mach- forever machine for at least another ten years. I'm hoping. I'm hoping, unless AI I, completely. I, breaks the ceiling of like what gpu can do i also don't think any computer has lasted me 10 years so that's shut up pretty bold (laughs) shut up eric shut up shut up let me dream okay we have to at least hit we have to be close to hitting a ceiling okay right right shut up 
God damn it. Yeah, yeah, anyway, wrong, but that that's that's my week. I might I might be able to finish building uh during the week, I think. Maybe maybe even tonight. It depends on if I work or not tonight. We'll see. Okay. I probably won't work tonight. <laughs> Actually now that I think about it. I was about probably to say, you not. were just like hard cut off. I'm passing I am, now. <laughs> I'm I'm probably gonna go to bed. Absolutely. Anthony, why is your week rough? Well, I involuntarily woke up at 4 a.m. Uh-huh. <laughs> Been up since then today. Uh, this weekend was just like nonstop labor since like Friday after noon, literally like noon. Uh, lots of fence work because, as y'all know, we have a herd of cows now. Bro. Um, Cow, legitimately a herd now, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah legal, legal, legally, you got two to th- what is it? Two to three? It's three. Need three. We need a minimum three. three. We'll have a fourth soon enough. Wow. Um, the man is the man is getting there. Yeah, and so the fence thing was just like a lot because mm-hmm. now we're working on fixing part of the fence that we didn't realize that we were going to have to work on and fix to begin with. Um, and it's on like the side of the, it's like where the mountain is flat. And then when it's just immediately drops off, that's where the fence is, is where it immediately drops off. So like at one point, a massive piece of wood that looks like it's from a railroad that someone had there to like keep the dirt in just fell out underneath my foot. And it was just like, I kicked it away and I was like, okay, well, that's gone. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, oh, oh, right. So, so, so that's been the cow stuff. Cause we're just trying to get everything situated and electrified because right now they're very chill and happy and tiny, but if something spooks them or if there's another cow over yonder and they're like, I want to go meet that cow, then they might actually try to go through the fence and that fence isn't stopping them. The only thing that'll stop them is a little tickle on the nose or like, Oh, what was that? I don't wow. like that. Wow. Um, cows man but the other thing we did was we finally hung up this mirror that we got on sale because in our bathroom we've been dealing with for almost a year now these mirrors that are probably like literally this big mine has always been shorter than me so i can't see like the top of my head uh without yeah (laughs) given that they're really tiny so you're mostly seeing wall in front of your like you know his and hers sinks um So we put it up feeling very accomplished because it's great. We made sure it was level and everything. And then I looked at it and I was like, why why is it crooked? Because the people that decided to put in the backsplash made that crooked. It's not level at all. So, of course, it looks like the mirror is not level and it's just like why would you do this your ocd is getting in the way of you actually being a human unfortunate me yeah how so only ocd people worry about whether or not the mirror is actually on straight it's if you can actually see yourself in it that's all that matters oh no i very often put things up without measuring things at all but there are certain things where i'm like you know, I have mm. to do this one right. Mm. Like, like if I'm putting up, uh, if I'm putting up like a picture frame, like uh-huh. whatever. I'll just throw sounds it like there. selective OCD to me. It is. <laughs> you, well, it's funny you bring it up because, like, when I was a kid, I had major OCD. I was the kid that would really? be walking on the sidewalk, and I couldn't step on a crack. You oh. know, if I stepped on the crack, I would worry that the world would end and crack fall apart. You know. Um, but somehow eventually, I think, well, I think my mom had the same thing. So maybe she taught me how to selectively have OCD where it's like, it's so turn weird. It off. Like, I'll share, I'll share one more bit about it. Cause this is one that I can't turn off, but it doesn't bother me too much. And sometimes I'll go weeks, months. I don't know how long without it happening, but like recently it happened where I will maybe get up from this chair and I'll go and maybe I'll turn right and then I'll come back and there's like two entrances of this room. So maybe I'll make all right turns essentially coming back. Well, now I'm wound up to the right. So instead of just sitting down, I need to do a left turn to unwind 
and sit back down and reorient my uh, bird brain with the compass. So like, that what is, is that? <laughs> actually a thing. Because it, I have met three people, including you, that have that same like type of deal OCD. going on. It's so annoying, dude. <laughs> so question, do you get also get uh, like when that happens, does that OCD kind of present itself as a vertigo feeling sometimes? Well, if it does, it would be very hard for me to notice it because due to rock climbing and martial arts, I have insane balance, like stupid balance without even practicing. So I'm not it's sure. More of the feeling than like it's an more actual inner imbalance. Ear. Yeah. yeah, it's like that inner ear weirdness that happens more like, so than like I, actually feeling unbalanced. I feel like I could describe it that way because like I described it to you guys as I'm wound up in one direction, like a top that was spun or something and I need to unwind or like a mm. spring that was spun. And I need to unwind. There's a tension to it. Yeah, there is a there's a feeling of tension where it's like I need to spin around and then I feel back in balance when I spin around. So maybe I don't know. It's possible. Hmm. It's very weird. But yeah. uh, the other thing that's going on this week is uh, I said, yes, I will train the new hires at work. You man, fool. that is a lot of work, especially when you don't have everything set up and ready. And they're all like, hey, what are we I'm do? done? Hey, I'm done. Hey, I'm done. And then like one pops out from behind the corner and you're like, wait, I th there's more of you. I don't even know how many there were. <laughs> Somebody didn't tell you how many there were. Oh, God. Well, technically, I could have known if I tried to remember when they were introduced That's as new cool. hires. That's, well, the thing I mean, is it's, that, fair. Like, it's fair. It's fair. It's my fair. team is like kind of like a subsidiary of the ma the major. Mm -hmm. So I don't like interact with the whole team nearly as much as I used to. Gotcha. So it's like it's one of those things where my my brain is like, do I need to remember this? If not, I'm going to not remember that because there's other things I could remember instead <laughs> fair enough free enough resources fair yeah. enough but yeah eric what, what, what's your july 4th week been like sir and it yes, has been sir. a lot of uh cooking <laughs> essentially funnily enough so this weekend we hosted different sets of people on saturday and sunday so we had to um we ended up doing a lot of cleaning around the house a lot of house chores and then I cleaned off the uh, green egg a little bit. And I we did uh, steaks on Saturday, which came out very well. Um, and oh, then we good. did tandoori chicken. No, 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 no not cooked. Dude, I made but a big mistake yesterday. <laughs> I did? I did. I was like, oh. ooh, I'm going to make pork parmesan. And then I found out that there was bone in it. You uh, dingus. And I had to like try to cut out the bone with scissors. And that was, that took so long. It was so dumb. Um, anyway, so you were cooking continue. on the grill. Yeah, overcooking. No, uh, I cook it correctly. <laughs> well, I do. Apparently. I do this great thing with, with green <laughs> egg. It's so nice because essentially you just get that sucker as hot as you can. Uh -huh. Right. And what I do is I get it to like seven, 800 degrees. And then I put in uh, live wood to add smoke flavor. Mm -hmm. And then I cook it really quickly on both sides. And then For how I long? have an internal temp. Usually about at, at 800, it's usually good at about 145 to two minutes. Okay. I was about to say, I was like, you better not let that very, thing for five uh, minutes. Then. No, 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 no. That no. is well done. <laughs> it's like, it's like very quick. Essentially, you're just looking for the sear. So it kind of depends on the, the thickness of the cut steak, of that type mm -hmm. of thing, cut of meat. Uh, but I just want to give it a nice sear crust caramelization on each side. <laughs> and then I close the whole green egg. And that live wood, and I use hickory and oak charcoal, and it just let it bask and bake in that smoke until I get it to the right temperature for whatever amount of wellness I'm cooking. 
So if I'm trying to get it rare, medium rare, I'm waiting for that tint to get to, you know, 125 areas, stuff like that. Hmm. So, and then I let them rest for uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes because I want that, the the fats that have turned into steam and are caught inside of the, the meat, I want that to turn back into liquid and get absorbed by the meat again so that it gets nice, tender, juicy. Thanks, Dad. It's so good. And then, of course, me and my wife do this amazing two-part chicken tandoori that we did for our family yesterday where she makes all the marinade and gets all of these Indian spices and all this kind of stuff, marinates the chicken for eight hours, and then I go and I cook that on the grill with um i did it with mesquite wood so it's super smoky mm. flavored mm. very good tandoor chicken now Fantastic. obviously the big green egg doesn't work exactly like a tandoor but it, it's, it's it'll be close. fine it's it'll be fine for sure that sounds awesome man yeah. tasty almost yeah. as tasty as our selections today what do we have eric yeah so this <laughs> is the damn new... so good yeah, well, that was that was <laughs> the segue of the sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> like, oh man oh yeah we haven't done a sponsored section in a while <laughs> and we don't have one today so we'll have to do well, that let's next go week. so this week we're <sighs> doing the another this is our second flaviar gauntlet as i've been coining them and this one is the American Mix Volume 2. Now, in this one, as far as I understand, these are different types of whiskey from America. And so we have three on our list. One is a corn whiskey. Another is a rye. And then our last one is an American single malt. Now, we'll get some more information about those, but we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to get those poured out here. And all of yeah, them yeah, yeah. this time are very similar in color, funnily enough. Yeah, I was about to say, they look very, very similar. Yeah. And I, but they, I, they, they we're going to have very different flavor profiles. Now, this is one thing that I have, I criticized Flaviar the last time we did this, and I'm curious to see whether or not they do this Holy type crap. of thing again. My uh, concrete, uh, very destructible coaster came out easily. Oh, mine has never come out easily. I have to catch it as it flies across the room almost every time. Good God. Across the room? You sure about that? Yeah. 100%? Yeah. Okay. I broke the first one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I believe you. Guess have these cards. So last a, time I, I I criticized Flaviar for this, and I'm, I, I am curious whether or oh. not they do this again. They tend to choose very different whiskeys in each of their mixes. Mm-hmm. And, Just that, but like the order was wrong too. Yeah, they were very different, and it was like obviously this one should have come last, and it was like <laughs> what the yes. fudge? It was and so, so bad. On, on one hand, I'm like, I I don't think we want to expect a progressive experience here, because I think we should set the bar low in that regard. Because I don't know that Flaviar is trying to make these with that intent. But why would they do that? Not not entirely positive, honestly. That is a critique that I have. Flaviar, if you're listening, look. Some of them should be like this, where you're trying to introduce different styles. But you should separate those from the ones that you should be tasting in tandem or together. It are really kind of this progressive tasting experience. You know what it reminds me of, Eric? Reminds me of that time that you were driving, I think, my RX-8, and we were going like snowboarding or something, and I was like, oh, man, we got no radio anymore. Here, let me pull up my laptop. I'll make some music for us, and I'll put it together a playlist. And I put together the Absolute worst. monstrosity. It was, Eric described it as, this is the most, like, roller coaster. <laughs> and, 
all, all I remember is that we went, and Nat, we went, if I remember correctly, from breaking Benjamin <laughs> to Ronald wow. Jen Keys was one Bro. of the switches. <laughs> Bro. Like that was the musical switch that we went into right there, you know? And he's, that trying was, to, he's trying to test your palate, man. <laughs> I'm okay with that. No, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> but that was only the, that was probably the best transition on the mixtape. Now. <laughs> it was real bad. Anthony's giggle. <laughs> it was real bad. I think we went. I, for, if I, I remember correctly, we went from Ronald Jen Keys to Kansas after bro. that. See, I, I went like Anthony. down a list of things. I was like, I like that song. I like that song. I like that song. I like that song. I just like added them in the order in which I ran into them. <laughs> just because my liked songs list is like thousands of songs long doesn't mean I put it on for the shuffle yeah. for the road trip. I there. had to be quick, man. We didn't have we didn't have sound. We oh were we were steadily driving into no service. We were steadily yeah. driving into Eric doesn't get a speeding ticket, but I do. Uh, I mean that's fair. That's fair. All right, where are we starting with here, boys? Hey, I think I'm smelling this balconies. Is that the first one? Yeah, it's a balcony, balcony. Eric. Is it balcony? It could be a balcony. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming kidding. it's balcony. I'm totally kidding. Balcony. But, but balcones. here's the thing. We, they, these are, you know what? I mean, it smells pretty. These are American whiskeys. I think it's balcones. It's probably balcones. Because no whiskey guy in America is probably saying balcones. That's too wine. He doesn't have the cojones for that. Oh, 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 oh. Now, this smells, one has... It smells all right. Yeah, it doesn't smell bad. It's a little bit sweet, sweet. almost. Yeah. I'm not getting the smoky yet. Yeah, but if yeah, there is no a smoke, smoke, it's like... oh, It's, it's like probably a, in, the, in, the, in the taste. There's like almost it's it doesn't smell like smoke, but it almost smells like something that maybe has smoke in it. If that makes any sense at all, like I don't smell smoke, but I smell something. Oh, I that can catch like, it. Like a little bit. It's obviously think, not smoke, but it's like what else could that be? I think I get it. I I would almost describe it as a little bit meaty, like umami yeah. flavor, like an yeah, umami yeah. smell, but very light. So it's I barely get, there. If you've ever smelled a, an actual bottle of uh, high fructose corn syrup and then cut that by like 90% so that you have all the sweetness kind of goes away, it's kind of got that vibe to it. All right. Oh man, I forgot that they came with the stickers yeah. so that you really don't mess don't even, up. Don't even use the stickers. Uh, let's look at the stickiness. Uh, she's she's kind of runny. Yeah, this is not super viscous. The tails are coming down pretty good. As the as you can see, it's got kind of this almost golden honey vibe going to it, almost like a bronze gold mm -hmm. type of color. Pretty. All right. Okay. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Episode twenty. Come on, Anthony. There you go. To our independence. <laughs> to yes. Wow. Mmm. Got to mm. smell it first. It goes. It's very um. Sweet. Yeah, it's got like this weird. Oh man, there's a candy. There's like a yeah. candy that tastes a lot like this. It's mm. almost. It does. It has this corn syrup type of flavor going on to it that gives it hmm. this almost candy vibe. The funny very thing is there's so. a very specific candy, right? Yeah, there's a very specific candy. I have no idea what the that. name of it is. Yes. You know what? It, it's ones here. So there's a name brand that I'm thinking of, but That's this cool. reminds me a lot of candies that I get when I go to those Georgia. old style towns kind of like the ones near dollywood and when you go into those candy stores they have this like caramel like almost burnt caramel type of flavor but oh, there's a little apple syrup. i think there's a little apple in there hmm. maybe i'm gonna have to On go the back aftertaste for at least to see. 
but yeah, it definitely tastes. It's it doesn't taste like candy that you have often. Otherwise, you'd be <clears> like, <throat> oh, it tastes <clears throat> like this. But it does definitely taste like, oh, I just went to like an old candy store that is still in operation, and they've got like yeah. candy made from molasses or something. And very much so. Their corn yeah, is that, so you strong. Know, that's in a that. that's a good note. I get the molasses flavor for sure. Mm-hmm. It tastes. It tastes a lot like those stores when they roll out the, you know, the pecan caramel things and they'll Mm. have like the molasses rolled out and they'll give you like little squares that are like crispy molasses that kind of burnt flavor. That's on point. It's got that sort of thing going on. I gotta say, I'm a a little worried because uh, I like this one. So there's one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I feel like the other two aren't going to make it. <laughs> Just knowing the track record. Yeah, knowing the track record, they start strong and then go, they go, off, go off the rails. I mean, last week, you know, number seven from whatever we call it, the oh yeah, the Christmas that never ends. Yes. Um, Bro. That one was, the Fr- Furry Ranch guys did amazing. Uh, yeah. For for the live audience, we're we're waiting on a bottle, but the another Furry Ranch episode is in our future. Soon. Guys. Soon, soon. soon. I, I will be visiting Total Wine this weekend for okay. sure. Okay, yeah, I might stop by and buy a bunch. Mm-hmm. But the next one, yeah, let's, Noble Oak. Let's I think I've one. had Noble Oak before. I don't know if I've had the rye. I don't think I've. I think I've had Noble look, Oak as well. I don't think I've the had bottle. the rye either. I, Just looking at this, like before we even get into the next one, too, I would have put them in maybe B, C, A order. Are you sure you've had the Noble Oak, or have you had the Oak and Eden? The Oak and Eden is oh, a Oak and very Eden similar is what? Okay. one. Uh, well, similar bottle design and name style, but, but it's far it more blended? popular than the Noble Oak. Uh, Oak and Eden has a few different options, as far as I know, so that you could have had a bunch. I don't know if all of them are blended. I think their base spirit is blended and then they have a single barrel if I remember correctly. Um, um I know they they do a lot of wine and finishing. Mm, yeah, cuz I have the I think I have the rum uh fin- finished one. That would make no. sense. They <laughs> they do a lot of that. Noble Oak is what I am uh familiar with. Oak and okay. Eden is not familiar to me have you smelled it yet no. anthony no uh, it's special mm. holy jesus yeah this is that's interesting, interesting. that doesn't smell like a rye at all that's so it doesn't sweet it's floral and this yeah. gives me like honeysuckle floral vibes look at you a fucking gardener out here oh guys i'm so sorry my dogs both apparently got into the same flowers this weekend and so when we were petting them and smelling their faces by them being so close, it was just like, you smell very good. What the- <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> Please do that more. Stop rolling roll. in the other stuff. <laughs> Crazy you know moms. what else I get? I get peach. I get like yeah. peach, floral, mm-hmm. like this soft fruit note. It almost gives me a, a a sake, like a stone fruit sake type of vibe, too. With a little bit of gravy on the side? I don't get any gravy. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know why I think that, but... It's not getting gravy soft. there, bud. Okay. I'm, I'm... Go. Jug, 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 jug. Hmm. This mm, it's, I don't know I, where that I, went. I wouldn't <laughs> call this a rye. This is not a rye. Very interesting. This is super tea forward. It's almost got like a I would um, say tea. Yeah, it's almost For got like sure. a like a peach tea. Yeah, it's got like this peach tea. It's got that earl gray bitterness to mm-hmm. it almost. It's subtle, peachy. It's very soft, flowery, floral you think it's the vibes. Anise? You think it's the anise? I'm not sure. Oh, I anise? forgot that the back has some some things. So, so they this say, is just a hot toddy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I would I would yeah. literally heat this up with like a little bit of water, 
and it would be a hot toddy. It It smells even more like tea. Yeah. Now Now that you've drank it and you go back to smell it, it's super floral. Is yours in a tea cup? Yes. Holy Jesus. How'd you do that? (laughs) I'm incredible like that. You are. (laughs) I get the slightest hint of rye at like the 75% mark, like towards the end, right before it turns. Like right before Frieza kills Krillin? Yeah. Right right, Right before that moment. Where the yeah. di- disc goes back to him, I get rye, and then Krillin dies, and it's all. That's not how Krillin. That's not how Krillin dies, dude. Doesn't he throw the destructo disc, and then he gets it thrown back at him by no. Frieza? No, I thought she. Oh no, him. she just blows him up. Or she blows him. The, he blow, She blows him up he, like a gut, like a freaking oh, human bomb. Yeah, he just blows her. Blows him up. Someone does he that. Points to at him. Points yeah. at him. And then he just floats evaporates. up, explodes, and that's what. Triggers Goku into Super yeah. Saiyan. Yo, there's a brilliant, uh, what is it? Stop animation with like action figures that recreates that fight online, mm. and it Must have... was absolutely incredible. A mm. lot of uh, stop action for that fight would be a lot of work. Okay, I'm picking up this single malt now. I gotta, I'm okay. gonna come back to the noble oak in a second. But dark, very Dang. interesting. That's a lot of dark and smoky. Ooh, mm. This. Oh wow. Mm, I get. I get uh, pain. I don't. Get, I don't get pain. I get leather. <laughs> I get a lot Try of again. leather. Like this. Has try a, again. No, no, no. It's like leather wood. Uh, no, I'm telling you. Try again. <laughs> because I'm looking at. Oh, there's like oh. a. There's like a stink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got a funk to it. It's almost like a um old barn. Yeah. Yeah. It's got like this old wood smell. Old barn. Look at you, Anthony. What the heck? It's kind of like some musty hay. Look, I live around yeah. cows now. That's fair. <laughs> they live here. It does. It okay, does have okay, like I can a get musty to the smoky. hay type of thing. It's smoky. I get I get this smell when I walk into leather shops. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Eric walks into leather shops when he's going to get his custom saddle yes. embroidered yeah it really i mean it, it smells like i could see it smelling like leather that's being actively used like if you pulled the saddle off the horse after a long day and horses that's sweat, what it smells like by the way yeah now Dark i want the audience to yeah, know dude, you have to lather dude yeah they have a lather on them dude yeah it yeah. doesn't smell as bad as we're making it out to be no it's just this slight <laughs> it's musty <laughs> It's, it's animal. It does have a musty type of deal to it for it's sure. It's animal. It, yeah, now, it, it's like you're it, yeah, it's like you're in a barn with an animal there and it's not man. you don't want to run away. Guys, I don't want to smell this thing anymore. Okay, I just want to drink it. Then <laughs> putting dark chocolate as the top note. I'm going to I'm going to it, it better be on the note. It better be on the taste. Ooh, baby, that smells. This is interesting. Huh. I have a flavor profile in my head, and I remember it so vividly. So my my uncle, I used to spend summers up in Virginia with, uh, with my dad's side of the family. And when I was super young, my uncle moved next to his uh, his dad and they owned a large like 40 acre lot on that lot they rented a bobcat and they pretty much hand built a pond with its own pump system and everything they put it in put fish in there and they used to Essentially, we used to go fishing and swimming and all this kind of stuff in the pond. This pond had a distinct flavor if you accidentally drank some of the pond water. Oh my god! So you're saying this tastes like pond water, Eric? If I were to take that water, oh my god, Eric! And way to make a connection to a memory and and smoke it. It has this it's weird, <laughs> and and it has this weird 
earthy, <gasps> almost like not fishy, but like tangent tangential mm, to that. Mm, right? It's got mm, like so, this funk to it. I, I'm, I'm glad so you're yes. saying that because all it can remind me of is when we were starting the bourbon trail last year. Mm-hmm. And it was just me, Eric, and Mark for the first night that we had gotten there. We go to just some random place to eat, and we all get the same drink. And Mark's like, looking at both of us, like, "What are they talking about? What are they smelling? What are they tasting?" And then he hands it to Eric, and he's like, "Smell that." And Eric goes, "Whoa!" I think so. That's first, a dirty glass. <laughs> I I think we need to preface. Me and Anthony, we get three of the same whiskey. And and, and that, just to preface it, this was an E.H. Taylor. Okay. So it was the E.H. Taylor small batch, which is a great whiskey. And we all get it because it was probably the best whiskey that was at that bar, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. I was like, this is this is the best this one. This is the best we're going to we get. get. We should get this one. And me and Anthony smell it. And I'm like, this is E.H. Taylor. It's wonderful this has like notes of vanilla some oakiness it's got a little bit of it's peppery a spice it's wonderful anthony's like oh my gosh i smell that he's like oh and we both take a sip and mark's over there smelling his glass and like looking at him <laughs> <laughs> and me so and quiet anthony, confused, me and anthony are confused. Like, oh man that tastes wonderful he's like <laughs> <laughs> I can see Mark. Eric, <laughs> just smell this glass for me. <laughs> and then I smell it. And I was like, holy crap, that is not good. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, we, we had the same whiskey. So we had our waiter come over. And our waiter, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to just take this one back. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. But Mark, first, first whiskey first of class. the trail. First glass of the trail. Ended up having a dirty glass for his whiskey. We had to we had to send it back. Yeah, guys. Um I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> it is very weird. It it's is very, a very weird. weird whiskey. I will like it, say, to its credit, at the very end, you get a little bit of pepperiness. It's kind of got this um it's pepper with a, a little bit of sweetness and that I would I would say it's kind of this cherry peppery sweetness I think they have that note but it's like a fruity sweetness with spite some sort of spiciness mm-hmm. right at the finish right at the end I really like that part but getting to it is kind of like trudging through a swamp so like what if they literally put in like damp freaking barley like well, like like soggy mildewy stuff and and they just didn't notice it in this i mean that can't happen right like, i mean you have to remember this is kind of like uh you think it's on purpose well it could be but this you have to remember a lot of people Jesus. like uh scotches and scotches are done with it's like a stinky cheese heat bog yeah right? but eric that's it's a different flavor palette than that agreed agreed it is a hundred very... percent very interesting choice for sure it has a a funk to it 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 also like maybe it was made by shrek large um thing let me actually look up so this is a single malt so we know that it is uh likely a malted uh, barley um but i i want to see exactly what they're making so it's 100 percent malted barley Smoked with cherry wood rather than uh, peat wood. You know what it was? Shrek what made it? this, but Donkey got into it. The Eric, make him stop. <laughs> cereal, dude. They literally list cereal. How many different uh, where flavors? Where do you cereal? get? cereal i mean like unless it's like just like the worst childhood memory of eating like well the most you have to remember by cereals. cereal they're not talking about like a sweetened cereal they're talking no they're about talking the cereal. actual steel cut grains yeah so you're taking you should think about that as like taking barley baking it like mm-hmm. malted barley malt the barley bake it and then steel cut it into oats 
Yeah, that's okay. the that's the flavor that they're they're likely alluding to. I mean, the funny thing is, right. is it doesn't taste bad. It, it tastes like an yeah. average middle of the run bourbon or whiskey in general. And then it's just like the smell is like, oh man, this takes me back to when I was on my grandpappy's farm, working the farm with my grandpappy or something like that. Let me, or let for me, most so, of us, when I was on a field trip. And it let me weird. give you the rundown that they give because this is this is pretty funny. Excuse me, Sorry. one malt to rule them all, and in the whiskey bind them. Hints of smoked almond and honey on the nose. The texture and flavors are reminiscent a, of a perfectly crafted cappuccino. I'm going to stop you right there. Semi-sweet <laughs> chocolate with a subtle smoke mm, from cherry mm, wood mm, and mm, oak. Don't Residual you have, flavors don't of invoke, bourbon and rye. Don't evoke Lord of the Rings from the top and then just not make any more jokes about it throughout the rest of your description. I, that is not me. That is not I my know, description. No, I know it's you. I know it's not you. That is I'm theirs. saying it's them. As How Anthony shows the one ring. You're disgusting. Anyway, continue, Eric. I'm sorry. I, I interrupted your description. Ah, that, that, was, that, was, that was it. That was it. Oh, okay. Well, but, um, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm, I'm kind of shooting this thing down. Yeah, it, like, it's an like interesting actually one. drinking it inc- incredibly fast. The weird thing is that it's like it doesn't. I'm surprised it doesn't bother me more, but it just it reminds me of being at the zoo. <laughs> I mean, it if really you have does. a good zoo memory, so I'm going back to one here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how these. Are. Oh man, I mean, this just smells like. <laughs> Sorry, candy man. I don't know. Why I'm guessing. One. I just feel like that must be painful with the bourbon. <laughs> it is. You're it is. It is. Um, yeah, I'm smelling, gonna... smelling the first one after finishing the the third one. Interesting. I mean, it literally interesting dichotomy. This is an like interesting popcorn. whiskey. It tastes it's super like sweet. A, a, a candy. There yeah. are candies that I have had that remind me of this whiskey. Yeah, the alcohol is completely gone on this. Yeah, It's just candy. It's just corn. I would say I get some of that corn, but I really... Man, it, it's just got this Interesting. super high fructose corn syrup. I, I like that. Going. I like that burn that kind of sits at the back. It does have a nice little heat right at the end. It's mm-hmm. got like this cinnamon vibe to it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, I love this one. Well, sorry, I don't love it, but I like this one. It's not. I can't bad, say I love it. Tend to love it. Definitely. I. This, in my opinion, would be one that if somebody likes sweet stuff, mm-hmm. having this around as sure. like a after dinner whiskey that you kind of just have as a, a little light dessert afterwards really doesn't. Oh seem wow! That Smell now. Let's go to B. this floral thing. Oh my god! And this it's, took on that honeysuckle. It's completely. Like I, I in the wow. minute it hit my nose, I remembered taking honeysuckles off the the bush and like downing that little bit of nectar you would squeeze out. It reminds me of Boy Scouts. Yeah, it's earthy, mm-hmm. floral. Like having to go out and go out into these fields of flowers and identify whatever it is that you could you could find in your book after drinking the other two i almost can't differentiate between this and teas that i have had for sure like if you if i smelled this in a glass i would i would have to i would have to make sure to get a good sniff of the entirety of the flavor to know it's not tea yeah I think I, I can take convince time. somebody that this is a tea and not a not a whiskey. It's just a it's just a tea infused with whiskey. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that Earl Grey sweet uh, bitterness mm-hmm. that you get from Earl Grey, but after Very that, outside of that, it's floral, honey, mm-hmm. sweetness. It's got like that mapley oh type of thing. They they put that as like maple. 
and you're getting like a sweetness with that earthiness, but I would separate them. For sure. I think I get more of that, like them separately. It tastes like if you were to take tea leaves, like floral tea leaves, and mm. kind of coat them in honey or add honey to that tea. For sure. Hmm. Okay, let's let's go back to this interesting single malt. <laughs> Man, that is just funky. It did, the smell didn't change at all. So even after nope. doing the other whiskeys again and coming back to it, the smell is poignant. It it, it you smells have dark, and you have bright flavors. Yeah, this and is and on dark. a spectrum, it is far on the left side yeah, of dark. This this gives it like mossy. Mm -hmm. leathery mm -hmm. vibes to me for sure for sure i am living vicariously through y'all with this one because i as much as i wanted to continue the experiment on c c is like a like a bad car crash that you're in i think the only thing that might be helping us is that when we were on our way to the bourbon trail, we stopped at um, maybe it was Four Roses Distillery. And we happened to be there at the just right time where you could smell the what what, what was it that we could smell, Eric? Do you remember that? It was very pungent and so it filled the, the air um, and it was corny and and you know it was what was going into the white dog. It was before white dog. It was like the mash, I guess, the mash bill. Yeah, so it, it's it's this yeast. It, it, yeah. it, so it's the smell that when yeast is breaking, like breaking down into alcohol, it's that smell. And there's a lot of notes of that in the few, in C. And I think because of that, it's not putting me off as much because it reminds me of that. Interesting. You can see that. Yeah, it's got but like if a I fermentation hadn't... flavor to it. If I hadn't been, if I hadn't smelled that, I don't think I would. You mean if you were me? Yes. They'd be like, mm, if you were not me, you would know. So, <laughs> so Anthony, take take me down here. What would you rate these? What's your favorite, least favorite? Walk me through these oh from your perspective. Eric right. didn't even make eye contact with you whenever he asked you. He was like, I can't. No, <laughs> I already know what's going on. I oh, think man. I know what he's going to say. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what I'm going to say because I was like in the middle of trying to figure that out, but we're going to roll with it on uh -huh. the fly. Uh -huh. Um, From least favorite to most favorite, we're going to go CBA. Okay. So A is at the top, B is in the middle, C is at the bottom. The few is so intriguing but at the same time i feel like if if i was in the right situation i could smell that and immediately vomit <laughs> wow but wow <laughs> strong statement <laughs> wow but yeah i get yeah <laughs> luckily that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> we just we're we're just trying whiskeys and then we see Anthony put it up just, to his nose and just like oh right at the camera like, all oh, over the place. Just projectile everywhere all over the camera that would make for the best YouTube uh, thumbnail clip though. ever <laughs> yeah ever yeah. clip would be great now I think I'm gonna give the few like a three out of ten because it could definitely be worse. And I could see someone giving it like a five to a seven just because they're like, this really reminds me of being back at home. I love the smell. And I'm like, good for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a farmhand, dude. What the heck? Right. <laughs> and so like, it's just for, for all of us, it's like, well, no, thanks. I would probably pay about five bucks for this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Tell a man first before he takes a sip. <laughs> it smells like you put dirty water in it, man. It's just I mean <laughs> it's it's not bad, but I'm not paying for this. I'm not I'm not buying this unless I'm like, you know, I can stomach that. <laughs> like you basically need to pay me. Um anyways, going up to the noble oak, which at this point, 
I'm struggling to remember it too much. This is probably the most unique rye I've ever had because honestly, I'm wondering like, is it literally just 51% rye? Because how is this a rye? It, it is like we've said a million times. It's a tea. Um, it smells beautiful. It tastes beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Um, my inclination is, I guess, a five out of ten. Like this is just, it's good. It's not like insanely over the top amazing. There's nothing super complex about it, but it's surprising and and neat. I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. I would totally have this again. Like, it smells good, it tastes good, and it's a hot toddy without having to put all that together. <laughs> and maybe it'll work just as well when you're sick. <laughs> we'll maybe, see. maybe. Um, but man, may it put it in a hot toddy for real? Like, what would it do? That could be really good. Um, for sure. So yeah, that one's like easily a five out of ten. I would. Probably... You would daily drive that. I think so. I mean, maybe y'all can talk while I try it again. I'm just checking. Well, because I mean, like, five is daily drive. Like, well, sorry. I can say, no, we removed that. We have kind of separated it now. Like, would it be a daily driver? Okay. But daily driver still kind of counts as that, like, kind of. uh, A a five out of ten is one where you have to, like, you're at least going to probably consider it as. You have to consider it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think there's some edge cases, right? To kind of. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Put a foot away from the idea that, like, fives are my daily drivers, because that's something Mm. that I've said in the past. And really change that of, like, once when I have a five, I'm like, I could drink this every day. Mm-hmm. But I think there are some edge cases where it's just as good, but maybe has unique use cases. Yeah, there are threes right? out there that I'd be like, okay. Yeah, but also like I think this is one of those that has a unique use case where like if you weren't a tea person, you oh, may yeah. not want tea all the time, but that doesn't mean that this is less good. Than your daily driver, it just is so like Anthony was saying. This is a very unique whiskey. I don't think I pick up a whiskey and think floral very often. Like we've had two now that have kind of gone down this flavor profile and uh, <laughs> been a little interesting in the floral department. I'm sorry, Ash. Uh- YouTube blocked her on Tap Haven podcast. It blocked her message about strong notes of smoked fish piss. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh She's being my sensitive. god, fish that's piss! <laughs> Ash, if you want to come down here and smell this, you gotta, oh my god, that was great. You, you strong notes I'll, I'll of fish leave, piss. I'll leave this in here so you can smell it because it is insane. Boy, um, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> back to it. For the Noble Oak Rye, I'm going to give that a 5 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. And I'd pay like 35 bucks for this. I'd probably pay more, but I just would drink it less and hold on to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I would definitely, I would like to pay 35 for it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it costs more. And then for the brimstone smoked balconas, balconas. Um, I'm actually going to give that a six out of ten because you know maybe it's just really? because of what it's being compared to here. I don't know. You know, I'm, like I've said a million times, I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at rating things. <laughs> so you're saying that this is like on par with the Long Branch? I don't remember the Long Branch. This is why I'm not good at this. You should really sip the Long Branch right now. I barely remember the Frey Ranch. Do we have the Long Branch? Yes, we have a bottle of Long Branch. That's something else. <laughs> you should have a bottle of the Long you Branch. You should have a Some... bottle of the Long Branch. That's upstairs. I, sh- I think I try to hide it because I think Ash started like using it too often. Oh, dang. <laughs> it's at that point in the in the de- <laughs> DiGiorno I, household. I, I was like, <laughs> I was like. I was like, why is there so little of this bottle left? Let me put this, let me put this in the back. And Ash is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my Luckily, God. I only have to hide the scotches. 
because uh for real oh when scotch, B's scotch, family, scotch. when beads family comes over i lose like two scotch bottles every what <laughs> yeah dude i'm not surprised now when we went over for the wedding stuff and eric had us bring like a nice scotch at the like uncle's house or something like that yeah they started downing that really expensive bottle so fast. That, wow. That night, just that night, we went through four bottles. We went through one really nice scotch. We went through an entire Bardstown Foursquare. Oh. If you remember. I remember. And then we went through two Glen Fittich 12s, which Jesus. is their like daily drive. Go to. Yeah. Wow. That's their daily? That's their daily driver, but like oh, they don't okay. go through it every day. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. They'll they'll go through about a bottle and a half every time. They buy the Costco bottles, so that and they still probably go through one, uh, uh a meetup. <laughs> you know, Jesus man, like they're they're like they're, their spirits. They're going hard, I guess. man. I can't keep up. I don't know, but man. I've sometimes we started like, getting them into burp. Okay, okay. I don't know what happens, but like when we were there on like the wedding day and Matt, you and I had the, those flasks of, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was the widow Jane or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think if you find like the perfect bourbon for you, it tastes like water because that turned into water for me. It was like the most refreshing thing in the world. Really? It was like what Percy Jackson describes as like, what is it? The nectar of the gods, like ambrosia. Ambrosia. ambrosia like i was drinking it and i was like this is ambrosia this will never make me drunk it will only make me stronger <laughs> you know like that's what it tastes like <laughs> anthony finish up your ratings oh my god oh did i not uh, the, uh, what, what would you pay for the balcone uh for, for i would pay 45 balcone. bucks for the balcones um and yeah maybe i'm overrating it because of the way i feel today i don't know and that's fair yeah walk us through it Let's let's go ahead and I, I'm guessing the single malt zero. I mean, I don't think we can put zero on the scale. Okay, which is fine. It's a one for me. The few is a one for me. This is a your one. first one. Do y'all want a play by play of Ash's reactions to having a smell? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, a lot because of we... frowning and, uh-huh. and 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 her face is just you know. <laughs> She smelled it a million times, but she's not drinking it. You you won't drink it. You have to drink. Oh, it. Oh, she's she's like okay. I, you have, I have to drink to, I will. it. She oh she just barely took like one milliliter in. She's Shit. Like, I will not even <laughs> take an actual Wait, sip here. <laughs> does she does she does she agree with me that we got fish some piss. fish fish water? Oh, it's Shrek's ass. Wait, no, you get your reward now. Okay. The one that tastes like tea, Miss ah! Brit- British. <laughs> okay, British. She's, she's doing the N-A. bee now. Oh, she's smiling every time she smells this. Yeah, it's good. Oh, she just drank the whole thing. (laughs) Oh, wow. She she drank like half of it. She drank like, I'm just kidding. I mean, to be fair, that that one is right up her alley. The Noble Oak is right up her alley. She's like, literally just tea with alcohol. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so. um, Do you want the last one? The few. Tastes like candy. Um, I unfortunately do not have any childhood memories to excuse this flavor. Um, I could see a you. I could see some kind of flavor uh, justification with the single malt, in the sense that maybe they want to create a whiskey that people can drink and say, "Yeah, this will it'll hurt you on the way in and on the way out," because. It's the closest thing to swamp water that you can get inside of a glass, man. It really is. It's it's not pleasant. Like I'm not. Like d- where is the dark chocolate? Where? Like it is the biggest thing on the flavor on the flavor uh, card, and I love dark chocolate. There's none of it in there. There's no love in that. It's just pain. It's just pain. So. Um, the few is a one. You couldn't force me to pay for this. Okay, if you okay. force me new, to pay for it, new thing then. How much would somebody have to pay you? How much would somebody to have to pay me to drink a this? bottle of this? 
30 bucks. 30 bucks for a whole bottle? To drink the entire bottle. Like yeah, the, you, I have to you, I have to you drink have the to bottle go in through a bottle in a night. With, no, not a night, but like you have to go through a bottle to get this. You have to give me a time frame because I'll I'll just literally sip that till the end of my de- my days. A week, a week, a week to finish this. You have yeah. to pay me sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Bid this one a fucking do. <laughs> um. It's gonna be the balcones for number two. Sorry. Yeah. Th- number two. Um. This one was interesting <laughs> at first, but that corn candy vibe got old real fast. And though it was very reminiscent of a unnamed candy that we have yet to f- like point a figure at, finger at, this is a little bit too unremarkable on the actual uh, palate that after the sweetness kind of... Uh, Peter's out in terms of novelty. There's not a lot to the to the drink outside of that. There's no there's no body to the spirit. Like there's nothing after the sweet. It's just uh, corn and um, whatever makes alcohol taste like alcohol. I can't remember the name right now because I'm not gonna lie. After going to the two shots, I'm feeling it. So. <laughs> So, uh, after A, out, looking at B, the Noble Oak Rye. This was fantastic, honestly. Like, I loved the the fresh idea of creating a whiskey that gave you a different experience versus, like, that homey warm vibe this may this is the first one that i've had that made me like have a refreshing kind of bre- deep breath afterwards wait 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 werthers i don't think i had the werthers with you didn't i the werthers is the candy that a- oh werthers is the candy oh. yes no no actually i think uh our fourth party source takes the cake it's candy that was left in grandma's purse for 90 years Werthers, <laughs> and that was Werthers. <laughs> that was Werthers for me. My grandmother. I actually used don't know what Werthers. Werthers is. How do you spell that? W e r t h e r. How often is something spelled how you would think it would be? Never. The English language is an <laughs> absolute atrocity. That, that's how I wanted to spell that, but I was like, "There's no way it's got to be no. like W U R." No. no, no. Anyway, continuing our review. Yep. Um. The Noble Oak is okay. Like, this is probably... Oh, I forgot to give numbers for the uh, Balcones. Uh, Balcones is a three. Mm. Uh, I can see some people liking that a lot because they haven't really uh, dialed into what their daily driver would be. I would pay 30 bucks for that. Uh, For the Noble Oak, I would say this is a four because of its novelty of being a tea that is infused with whiskey somehow (laughs) it's the other way around i i can't believe that this is whiskey with just an herbal vibe this is herbs with a whiskey inflection the flavor is very interesting the nose is very very fun and it's it's very springtimey, like the general bouquet of the of the spirit, as well as the level of, uh, I guess, impact that the the spirit has on your system. Definitely like a super light baby, like forty eight percent alcohol. Not not going to knock you off your socks, and. If you boil some water, pour it into a glass, and then pour this along in after it, people are going to be like, oh, man, did you make a hot toddy? I mean, you'll probably have to slice a, a lemon, obviously. But you know you know what I mean. A, a little citrus note on top. Of, I, I think this I would be insane. bet you could make a pretty interesting old-fashioned. <laughs> oh, for you, sure. You, you cut down the syrup. 
For sure. I finally figured out how to make a mixed drink with bourbon properly. Oh, you don't? You no, know, you add ice <laughs> and a slice of lemon. That's not a mix. Okay. That's it. That's all you need. Okay. If you add ice okay. and a slice of lemon, you okay. now have the perfect mixed drink. That's the okay. only way to mix bourbon. Essentially, okay, my old-fashioned recipe is approaching that idea. So fair no sugar at it i like my old fashions to be uh have a little bit more oomph to them so i do three ounce pours with uh barrel proof uh whiskeys now supposedly like lemon juice helps break down alcohol in your system is that true do y'all know i don't know Mm, that would be something that you would probably check on the internet Anyway, That's where I finishing. got it from. <laughs> finishing. <laughs> double that out of my ass. <laughs> is a four. Uh, I would pay $40 for this. And yeah, I would actually, you know what? I would suggest people to actually go out and get this one. I would definitely suggest to, be, to at least put it on your shelf just because the, you're, I haven't run into another whis- whiskey like it. And We've tasted a f- fair amount of whiskeys on this podcast at this point in time. I have not had something like this. I think that in the other tasting gauntlet, the, um, the sake, the one that had a sake floral note to mm-hmm. it is in the same genre. For, for sure. I would take this over the sake one, though. I agree. Mm-hmm. So, Eric, you like keep track of all of our data points, right? Yes. Do you include Anthony and Nat's moods? No. Because I feel like I might have noticed a, a, a trend, which is when Anthony's in a bad mood, he rates too high. And when Nat's in a bad mood, maybe he rates a little low. <laughs> 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 We're like the opposite. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big pouty baby. I like to be at the bottom. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. No, I think even, I don't know. I think that because this is such a refreshing take on what would be a rye whiskey, this is n- in Dude. no way a rye. Yeah, can in we know? No can we know now? Rye. Like, is there rye in this? There is rye in this. Yeah. Noble oak rye. How much? 5%? Did, they, did somebody yeah. chew it and then spit it into the freaking rye bill <laughs> after they sucked the rest of the freaking rye out of it? Oh I really God. appreciate this. I tried to go to Noble Oaks website. I'm pretty sure legally they popped up something saying, what's your date of birth? Immediately, one one nineteen eighty. Yes, I just have to click one button. I don't have to actually... Fantastic. Like, nice. fake. They get a win. They get yeah. a win. They, they, they got a win there. I'm how much? giving you my information. So let's see. Much, on their website, it doesn't say how much rye. It just says flavor notes. Toffee, maple syrup, lemongrass, and allspice. I can see the toffee. I can see toffee. Man, this was an interesting tasting. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight forward from A through C because I, I think there's some an interesting story. Wait, that's your rating? No, 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 no. no. Okay. No. So the Balcones. This, like many corn whiskeys, tastes like a corn whiskey. I think if you like corn whiskeys and you like something on the sweeter side, this has that dessert candy feel to it i don't think that's quite up my alley i think if i'm going for something sweet i'm going to do something besides a whiskey when i look to whiskey i'm looking for something that has complexity and a little bit darker flavors i don't know that this is up my alley but i think it's for somebody um i think this is a a 2.5 for me Mm -hmm. or somewhere around there it's not quite as like I wouldn't ever get this, but it's also not quite at the stage where I, I'm like, going you mind to if I go get? It. I would suggest that somebody try it. I wouldn't say that I would want it. I would say if somebody started talking down this, I want a sweeter thing. Like it's too much. Too like if I start seeing that they might like a whiskey if it were just sweeter. So mm, this might sure. be the place that I go for it. Yeah. May I? Because I'm going to yeah. forget. Anthony, go, go for do it. it. Do it. Do it. Anthony. I, do as some people thing. know, can't stand things that are too sweet because of a injury. Right? 
an injury an okay. injury literally i have like to your something's too no no literally like i could go into it if you want but if i have something too sweet physical pain happens wow okay yeah. this is not very sweet to, to me like to me it's like oh this is sweet but it's not like something that was infused it's sweet in spirit not in body yeah it, so like there's definitely it's look like eric sweet. he understood it you understood it for like two seconds shut the fuck up <laughs> i just don't i just don't want people to think that it's like overpoweringly sweet like something we've had before because no, that's why i like I, it it's it's there's a sweetness to it but it still feels and tastes like a bourbon we're we're talking about sweetness from a good bourbon perspective otherwise yeah. it'd be a one for me like if i tasted like fake sweetness i i'd like Cool. This Thank you. Has a spot in the whiskey world. It's just on the sweeter end of the spectrum. But that spectrum but, is still good. I just don't think it's for me. You give it a two point five. Yeah, I'd give it like a two point five. Which I, means you'll never drink it. No, no, no. Uh, so one, I'm not going to finish the glass. Two is usually like, okay, I'll, I'll drink this, but I'm never going to go out and buy it i'm never going to like seek it if they have something else i'm gonna get it right uh, a three is like i'll get this at a restaurant if it's like their their best whiskey on the menu like it's something that if somebody gets it for me i'll drink it i might buy a bottle of this if it's at the right price or something like that four is where i start to say this is a good whiskey in general it's probably just not yeah. yeah you should try fours but they're probably not my palate exactly five is where it's like this is my palate this is what i like everything above five has a lot of nuances of, but like anything above five for me is extraordinary but all for different reasons right all the way up to being 10 is my favorite and perfect whiskey. And there is no other whiskey that is a 10. Right. So this is There's like the one Lord and savior. Yeah. And this is, this really rides the line. Like on one hand, I could see a reason to go out and like get a bottle of this. But on another hand, I wouldn't really do it for myself, but no. like, it's not terrible. There's nothing inherently bad about it i wouldn't gravitate towards it but like i see the appeal it's a little bit too sweet for my palate it's a little bit too much corn sweetness for my palate mm. i get like this corn syrup type of deal. literally just has syrup on the on the freaking yeah. card it says syrup and sweet <laughs> and yeah. sweet one of the times that they're right yeah for sure so i give this a 2.5 i'd like to see this in the thirty-five dollar range, I think that's about it. where it's going to sit. The weirdest thing is, ni none of us really got any smoke, and it says smoked. Yeah, I don't. I get, didn't get any I, smoke. I don't get a lot of that smoke. Absolutely that is, not. That is something that I do not get here. Um, the rye is super interesting. It's floral. It's not sweet, but it has sweet notes. It really reminds me of like a honeysuckle. It is. It has some things that are just really pleasant from a spring perspective. Um, this is really one of those that pushes the four to five range. And I don't oftentimes do the half ratings, but it sits somewhere in the middle for me. It, it's not going to be something that I go to on a, a, on a daily basis. It's not going to be... A, a something that is a daily driver for me but there is a spot in my bar for this one for sure it is so interesting that i probably like the whiskey friends aren't gonna entirely be behind this but i have plenty of tea friends that might drink this and be like wow this is really pleasant and it's refreshing bright floral earthy slight sweetness of like honey and flower like flavors it's it's just 
quite pleasant. So I, I think I'd give this a 4.5. I would definitely pay upwards of um, probably like 40, 45. Uh, I'll put 45 really for this one. The few single malt. Let me go down this rabbit hole again. Oh boy, man, that's that smell. I gotta say, yeah. the smell. Mine's empty. The oh. smell is not so bad when you go and revisit it with nothing in it. You know, when you do that little thing. Oh yeah. Right. Too bad that the actual liquid is swamp water. Yeah, I mean they use swamp water to cut it, obviously. Obviously, from Shrek's back. From Shrek's shower and drain. There is. <laughs> there are things about this whiskey that I do think are redeeming. I'm going to talk about its good points first. There is okay. this at the very end. There are these pepper cherry notes that I like quite a lot. Pepper cherry. Okay. No, I made up I, word, but okay. <laughs> So like you you grind some pepper in your mouth and then you put a cherry in it from yes. the Chick Fil A. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It has Made a weird try Not that. a cherry oh. from Chick Fil A, but like a dark cherry, like a maraschino cocktail cherry, like a darker flavor. Wait, did you just say cherry from Chick Fil A? I did. Anthony did. Because <laughs> I won't eat those. Wow. He gives them oh the on the milkshakes. Milk. Got it. Yeah, okay. Yes. We're yes. on. We're on. I was like, wait, yep. what? <laughs> so okay. On one hand, I really like that. I would love to see that in another whiskey. I think that the the upfront flavors of this are really just too divisive. If there is a, a person that likes what's going on here, then like, sure. But man, the nose is rough. It really does have this. Guys, you have to literally have it on the farm. Because then your nose is already used to that smell. You don't yeah. smell it. <laughs> it's it's it's. Andy's like, you don't get it. It's a lifestyle, dude. Yeah, the you more, can't drink this not on a farm. The it's more on the label, I think right? about it, the more I get this moldy leather yep. type of vibe on the nose. Like if you left leather, and uh, funnily enough, I've done this before, where you have like a leather glove or something like that. If you leave it out in the yard. And then it it like rains. It can be, get moldy. It smells like that. That's Eric. Look, it smells Eric, like a moldy leather. Eric, glove. I understand that you're trying to give perspective to the audience, but I just <laughs> want you to understand that whenever you say these things, and I want you to understand whenever I look at the camera and tell you this, your descriptions. Do not evoke a want to drink the alcohol after you describe them. This one's rough. I don't know if you want to drink this one. Like it, it has this this swampy, moldy, mossy type of deal going on, but not like a peat wood Could you, type of moss. Would Would you say it's like a pile of? baseball gloves after a really long game in the middle of summer. <laughs> I could see that, honestly. I could see that, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then when you actually drink it. Oh, he's actually going to drink it. He took like a milliliter, just like Eric, ash. fit just finish it. Eric, yeah, okay. be a man and finish it like I did. Actually, you know what? You hold on, it? hold on, hold on. Let me talk to the, you guys, the, the audience. I just made a statement about you guys being man enough to finish an alcohol. Fuck that. And fuck me for saying it, right? Don't do that. Uh, Continue, Eric. So uh, this is, this is, I don't, yeah. I don't know that I could finish a, a glass of this one, honestly. I, this is probably my first one of the the podcast you would dnf oh <gasps> yeah i don't think i could finish this one gasp the, um the taste has some redeeming qualities but it takes so long to get there and every time it gets up to my nose i just think about being like stuck in like moldy swamp type of deal it's very weird 
Um, we got to remember, Eric has the super sniffer. Yep. This is 10 times worse for him. This is so much worse for him, but he's still... The thing is, his super sniffer should make it that he can't drink this at all. But he did. Well, yeah, so, because when he turned 21, we pushed him to drink so many, so much of that Anthony, really bad thing. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. <laughs> he learned. Semantics. <laughs> anyway, yeah. he drank it anyway. I, I, I think this, honestly, so I can't just say that I would pay zero dollars for it, but I just wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> you could um, say negative okay, dollars. Can, they would can, have to pay you. Can what? I clarify? Can I, I clarify? When I said five dollars, I assumed it would cost thirty-five dollars. So you would pay me thirty, and I'd be okay. out five. Zero dollars then. Uh, do you want to know the actual price of this whiskey? Because it's yes. freaking insane. This is a no. seventy-dollar whiskey. No. What? Some places near me have it for a hundred dollars, but I Steelbox has it for seventy-one ninety-nine. I've changed my rating to zero out of ten and negative twenty five dollars. <laughs> wait, wait, let me write that down. Let, could, let the record what is show. That, two out of ten. Let the record show. It was three out of ten. I changed it to zero out of ten, negative twenty five dollars. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, Absolutely. Eric, disgusting. this is an important data point. You can't just change it. You have to have they change their fucking mind <laughs> section. Uh, okay. <laughs> After <laughs> clarifying information, they cle- they change their mind. They you change know? their mind. It just, you know? it just happens. It we happens. are not. We are. We are not capable of uh, consistency. Yeah, this you is have to have, consistency. You have to have a thousand rows to match all of our, or a thousand columns. All the data points. Exactly. <laughs> every Man. every. T- <laughs> could you could you imagine paying seventy dollars and then drink like your first drink of this is this. I think I would throw it into the fire. I would never drink bourbon again. Like Sorry, is, I would never drink whiskey again. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's wild. Um, this uh, look, audience, don't pay seventy dollars for this. There are scotches that are wonderful. Buy a monkey shoulder for twenty. Do anything else and get a good single or a a, a good blended scotch at like twenty five dollars. I mean, That'll be wonderful. If you want a single else. malt, like go, just pay like ten more dollars, and you get a Macallan fifteen or well, some. Nonsense. I'm sorry. Like, th- was there malt in this? <laughs> it's a it's a hundred percent malted barley. Technically, no. technically, did it I'm taste sorry, like I it? My cards. Good riddance. Right. The only thing I kept was the B. Was the uh, noble oak. Anyway, I Eric. imagine this is what Jason drank as he drowned in the lake. <laughs> Eric got dark for a second. Okay, okay, okay. It's not Eric. in October yet. Uh, okay, black yeah. Spider-Man suit, Eric. What are you? Yeah, what are you what, yeah. <laughs> so, what are your official ratings? I, I, I wait. I gave them all. I gave them run all. us through them again because we, all we all lost them. for Balcones. Four point okay. five for the Noble Oak Rye. And okay. one for the single malt, the few single malt. Now, okay. the Noble Oak Rye, let's let's look that up. This is a, I see some for 35 45 We're looking at 35 to $45 for this Noble Oak Rye, which is right around Are what everybody me? was talking about. So like. That's insanely well-priced. Yeah, that's right in the price range that I'd like to see it. I think that's worth a pickup. If you see the Noble for Oak Rye. For sure. Uh, Definitely pick that up. It's super interesting. If you like tea, but want something with a little kick to it, man, this is up your alley. This will do this it. Is, this is right there. This is probably the best one I've found that does that type of thing. Um, it's not particularly on our high end of the spectrum, but I think we're bourbon whiskey drinkers. If you're a tea drinker looking for some a little bit of kick, definitely this pick is up it. the Noble. For sure. Um. And let's look up the Balcones Brimstone. Oh, wait, no, that one was good. That one was good. This one is looking right around 45 to 55, it looks like. So 45 to 55, which is about, it's a little bit more expensive for me and Nat. 
for where we rated it, but this is right up the alley of where you were looking, Anthony. So this is another one. I think there's a market for this one, like I said. I think it's a little bit too sweet for my palate, but I definitely see how somebody could really enjoy this one. And it has you know, a lot of redeeming factors to it. I think I know why I praise it more than you guys. It's because I don't get to eat sweet things anymore. Oh, uh, and wait, I can why? have this and it's that. sweet without yeah. it hurting. Why because of the neck have? thing. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, the yeah. the injury makes the it to where if I have too much of like processed sugar, suddenly it just everything hurts and it's mm. horrible. I'm so sorry. like, but yeah, this gives you that yeah. like sweet kick without being like a literal candy, which I think is really nice. And to be fair, I do not dislike this whiskey. It is one of those where I'm like, I could see myself buying this. It's just, I don't know. But there is a market for this for sure. I love that on the site, they say that, oh man, it's an award winner. And when you click on the awards, it's not listed under any of the awards. Oh, that's, I don't know. <laughs> that's funny. So, uh, should we welcome our audience to the Tap Haven podcast where we occasionally talk about video games? Yeah, we occasionally we talk about did. video games. Like, <laughs> and we talk about whiskey uh, to uh, an unhealthy degree. So, Anthony, what have you been playing? Dude, this before week? what I've been playing, I have two exciting things I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, oh. One is, in case you missed it, I finally produced a YouTube long featuring you guys. And oh. Yes, I released it on Friday. I'm very proud. I hope everyone enjoys it. I haven't seen and it yet. All of my shorts since are pointing at it and are from it. And so it's the first time for me, at least, that a siege happened. I, it might not have been the first time a siege happened for you guys, but your reactions are great. I love it. Nat, I'm sorry for telling you to shut up when I was trying to listen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad about it, but I think it's funny. <laughs> I'm literally like, Nat, shut up. I'm trying to listen. Because oh <laughs> I couldn't hear them. And I was like so frustrated because neither of you were like, y'all like, y'all were like, y'all didn't want to come in siege, but I'm like, what's going on over here? Let's siege. And I had to like drag you guys over. <laughs> it's true. If, if you look at like, if you look at the chapter markers that I put for the video, you'll see like, cowards finally cowards. convinced them to come <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> i'm just like ragging Our on you guys the whole time sort of <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty funny so i had a lot of fun with that it's been a lot of work um the third short i came out with i finally or maybe in the second one but the third one is where it shines i came up with a fun little thing with eric's background which i think is great because eric's the only one that we can really see so now he's the feature but there's a fun little thing that why y'all have did, to Why see. did Nat have his camera on? What's happening? Why did Nat have Honestly, oh, I God. wonder if he did, but for some reason it showed like a red icon. I don't know if it was a uh, weird Discord thing where sometimes they just don't show you the person's video. Yeah. Sucks, but uh, anyways, next it time. It is what it is. So I had a lot of fun making that, especially because like uh, I spent a lot of time just working on my like WTF is whatchamacallit, which is taking forever and kind of dragging on, but it's it's it like it was so much fun when I was making content with uh, you guys and Tony in um, the unspeakable Baldur's game. Gate. Uh, <laughs> well, there was that, but Hell Divers. Um, oh, the game that must not be the named. The game that must not be oh. named. Yes. Uh, but now it's so nice F's to like chat. get back into a game where I'm just like watching us have fun and, and be silly um, instead of like a review video. Anyways. I saw some people playing a game today. I don't know the name of this game, but the mechanic idea I think is incredible. This game is like a mixture of gang beasts and what do you call it? Um, Fall Guys, where there's a bunch of different arenas and different weird game objectives. They're all hilarious. But the thing I noticed is that they implemented slow motion perfectly in a multiplayer game. You get hit by someone's nunchucks or a giant hammer, you get slow motioned because you just got whacked, right? So you're just like, whoa. But it's a real-time game. How can you do slow motion? Hmm. When you stop the slow motion of you getting kind of dazed, everything is fast-forwarded a little bit until you get caught up to reality. Oh! Which is part of like the loss, right? It's part yeah. of the... You have to react now quickly. Yeah. 
and I think that's so cool because like mm. all of us have always wa- wished that you could do the the time slowing effect within multiplayer, but you can't. Yeah, but they have, and it's in this goofy ass Gang Beast Plus like what do you yeah, call it game? And it I think it's done. Yeah, it's just too cool, man. It yeah, makes me want to play. Cool. I think the only ones that I've seen that pull it off well do the dome, right? Yeah, you have like a dome one. where everyone yeah. is slowed within it. Yeah, yeah. But this one, it's crazy that you are slowed. Nobody else is. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, I've been learning about it recently, so I I, th- I could see how they do it technologically, but it's just it's hmm. not easy. Yeah, and it's awesome. That is pretty cool. Um, That's pretty dope. You're gonna have to figure out the name for us, so we uh, like. Yeah, for the next I wish episode, I... we'll have to talk about it. Apparently, you can play it for free, though. The only reason to pay for it is if you want to buy in-game content. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! As long as like a friend has it, you can play it for free. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, that actually just reminds me of a game that we gotta play someday, which is the Chained game, where like yeah, you're tr- you're trying to. Now nah, I don't know if you've seen this. No, but it's it's actually not even new. You are trying to do basically get over it, right? But not okay. nearly as frustrating. It's just a platform puzzle, like a jump puzzle, like in Guild Wars 2, right? But Nat, all three of us are chained together. So we have to jump at the same time. And, and like if you could swing someone around and and it's Nat, just like Bread and Fred. It, yes. Yeah. Okay. And it looks so frustrating, but so great at the same time. I, I love Bread and Fred. The only reason why I stopped playing is because I stressed my wife out by playing it with her. Yeah, <laughs> no. that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That's a relationship tester game, right? There. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, it, did, it didn't test our relationship, but it was definitely like one of those things where I was like, okay, I know the the yeah. level of game I need to like oh, be presenting stop playing to you. This now. Yeah, yeah, that sure. one is that one is called Chain Together. Ash yeah. Ash has confirmed. Um, you do remind me that when I played, what was it? It takes two with Ash. I was very much in that mindset of like, go go go. I see the next thing to do. But she's like, oh, what's this? This is cool, and it helped me be a better gamer. I learned how to better just take in the sights and the randomness around me, rather than just go from. A to B to C and, and just keep accomplishing things. You know what I mean? So like it's neat. But games I played, um, I mean a tiny bit of V Rising, because why not? It's awesome. But the new game that I've played because it was on a great sale, like an insane sale, was Forza Horizon 4. Um, as I mentioned last week, yeah. when the I'm racer tired, boy wants racing to play yeah. a racing yeah. game. Yeah. Why yeah. am I not surprised? Yeah. Yeah, and I've been playing it on like my Steam Deck, just sitting on the couch, just chilling. And parts of the game are great, especially I think I mentioned it last time, is that I think <clears throat> this game actually has actual roads, which is cool. The worst thing about this game is you'll be trying to play and they'll just talk to you about, oh, you're so awesome. Like you <laughs> qualified for this thing now. Oh, hey. Before you go and do this next race, um, this is for a movie set, and you're like the stunt driver, and this is how it's gonna go. And oh, they like you so much that they gave you this house. And I'm just like, why is there not a skip button? I can't skip any of this f- fluff. This you have filth. a you have a great game, but like, did some producer tell you, oh, there has to be like acting and voice acting, and 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 I'm it's just very like possible. It's so obnoxious. It's completely unnecessary. Like, it just annoys the crap out of me. It bothers the poop out of you. Which, yes. That, well, I was I was gonna say. Which, by the way, while we're talking about say, the summer seam sale is live right now. Uh, oh really? Steam, feel free to pay us if you think. Oh no, Ash, I'm no, not calling no, you no, slow. I'm calling but, you um, awesome. No, no. There are some amazing deals right now that you should check out. Like, Elden Ring is on sale for the first time. We have Incredible. Baldur's Gate 3 on sale. Incredible. We have things like, I think, Hogwarts Legacy is 70% off. So Sekiro is 50% off. That's nuts, because Hogwarts Legacy is an incredible game that I think is best played during the winter time. Yeah. 
And do you want it for twenty dollars when it's a what seventy dollar game? Like, wait, let's go. Didn't they come out with major D, like DLC that was free? Yeah, is there? It's not even paid DLC. Yeah, Armored Core Six, which just came out by Platinum Games, one of the best developers, is fifty percent off essentially. We have things like Deep Rock Galactic for less than ten dollars. We have Doom 2016 for four dollars. One of the best F single player FPS experiences for four dollars, right? Of all time. Some right? would say. Like this is insane. The Master really Chief Collection. Six full Halo games. Back from when How they much? were good. Ten dollars. <laughs> That's kind of that's the not whole bad collection. That's if you've insane. never played that, you got to get that. That's insane. The Witcher three, but the whole complete pack, twelve dollars and forty nine cents. What are we doing? What are we doing with ourselves? So I'm just gonna be the entire Kingdom Hearts collection for the rest of the podcast with 30, yeah. for thirty five dollars for those who like Kingdom Hearts like me. You know, it's insane. The new God of Wars are like fifty percent off. The Cyberpunk series is like twenty percent off. B Rising, which we've been talking about for like weeks, is forty three percent off right now. So, no way, already? Yes, it's twenty dollars, it Anthony. Twenty dollars for the experience that we've been having right now. That's it's dumb, insane. Dude, I tried to play that on controller the other day. Good it's, luck to you guys yeah. on PS Five because yeah, it is rough. something else. They've done a good job. It's just a completely different way of thinking. Yeah. completely different way v rising. controller v rising oh no it's very weird it's but it, it, i don't oh, know wow. if it's good or bad yet the last so the last thing i had the last thing i wanted to say before because i wrote this down oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, i already perfect. forgot was that i agree with someone on reddit that said the following the base building is 99 percent of the end game lol after pvp servers die in a week know which servers stay strong the ones where everyone is focusing on castle building i know eric that hurts your soul i mean <laughs> i mean here's the thing i agree with it and the base building is amazing it is. i just the don't best. think that it is it has the longevity like here's the thing even if base building is where they go for this type of thing they need to keep improving. They need to keep doing stuff. And they need I mean, to have a way to like see this, to show assets. it off, to, to, to make it mm. interactive. They I need feel like way. what they've done, Eric, is they've done, okay, we have combat. We mastered it. Yeah. Here's our first try at base building. We mastered that too. Yeah. Wait till you see what we do next. Hey, Because those I'm mechanics okay are done. That. They are Look, done. I'm okay they with that. They did it. Now, I will say, Anthony, good, good news because they did release a pre press statement re uh, recently. They are going to continue working on V Rising. They are hard at work at the next big release. We don't know when it'll be. They have no estimation, but they are hard at work at doing new stuff for V Rising. Dude, the I next read thing that post and I was like, this is a nothing burger. It is. What? Oh. But I am glad. Oh. I mean, to be fair, they don't have anything to release right now. They probably are doing so many bugs. Bug fixes. They probably have the full team on testing for the release still. It's probably going to take a month or two months, to honestly, before they fully fleshed out all of the issues that they have now found from the release. I'm not worried about that. But I am just glad that they have something planned, right? That they aren't going to just drop the IP because I want them to keep working on it. It is one of the best, it, well, it is one of my favorite combat mechanic games. I love the style of combat that they have developed for this game. And I think the open world concept is so novel, so interesting. I understand that a lot of people have lack for like some of the depth of story and things like that. But those are all things that they can keep improving dude. make more interesting. I've oh. probably said it before, but I'll say it again. One of the best things I one of my professors ever said was it the story is pointless for gaming. Now he was extreme about it, but what he was getting at is that the game mechanics 
the replayability, the feel of actually engaging in the game is what is most important. I think that is true unless the game mechanic is story-based. For example, like Myst or but things like that. I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a story-based game. No, no, no. But no. like in, in terms of like when someone goes to play a game, what is the first expectation and the first desire? Engagement. And, that's and, and, that's and enjoyment. subjective though engagement is a br- umbrella word what I'm saying is like if you want a good story you will never be a good book a video game will not be a book I agree up to a point but I would say For pure story there are games that are pure story that are the top games of like Disco all time. Elysium like Disco Elysium Alan Wake for example, Alan Wake is one of the highest rated games on Steam of all time. It won almost every award. It sold more copies than like God. I'm, and yeah, I'm not what? discrediting has your absolutely statement. no gameplay. There is literally I, I, nothing to do in it, Alan it's, Wake. It's it's a nothing it burger. Just well. story. So is it yeah. a game? That's what it's a it's a visual a novel. There. Honestly, there's a debate there of whether so or not then it's a game. I would but. argue that that's not a game. It is a game Anthony, in every sense of the market. World. Yes. Yes. So while you could argue that what is a game from a 75% off, by the way, on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> while, while 100%, I think you could argue whether or not Alan Wake is a game or other things like that are a game from like the perspective of playing it. The market, at least, doesn't consider it different. And, and and you can say that that's right or wrong, and I I, I I honestly might be with you on that, but the market considers it a game for all intents and purposes. Yeah, the the best way I can put it is like, I I'm, I love that there are a variety of games in any way, shape, or form, but if you ride a bike, it behaves a certain way and it feels good. There are too many games where you go and try to ride their bike and you feel like you're falling off and it's not your fault. That's a mistake of game design is what you're alluding to, right? Yes. They focus too much on not having you ride the bike and that feel good. And so it suffers. By the way, speaking of amazing game mechanics, Noita second favorite game of all time 60 percent off eight dollars that's insane i lied the what? game that i alluded to last week that i was playing was noita what i've been playing noita oh how dare so you good. lie to him oh welcome to the light how dare you Whoa. oh look at him look at him he finished oh it's <laughs> felt so good Oh my god. <laughs> well, I told you last week I was worried that if I told y'all I was playing Noita that Eric would say something and then I would suddenly stop playing it because Eric like Eric overhypes things sometimes and then I don't know what happened but I couldn't I don't know. I I never got into Noita until I saw Pirate Software go on a power trip and I was like that seems kind of fun. Dude, it's yeah. so fun. It's so fun. Well, he's like I'm cool. a god, no one can stop me. And I was like Dude, it's so cool. I could try that. Oh, it was good. How do you it like it so a, far? How do you? How is it? It took me a little too long to realize that you can only modify your wands at a certain point. So I like totally fucked up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. Until and you so, until you find the thing that lets you modify it where the fuck you want. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. So trying to modify your wand is interesting because I'm like not doing well, obviously, and I want to do better. And I'm trying to figure out yeah. how to mess with it. And you get to play with it, yeah. but I just like I didn't have the right resources when I knew how to do it. The biggest thing is like, how do you heal? Well, now, so far, the only way I heal is going to the next level. Um, maybe there's another way in the future. I'm pretty sure there is. So it's definitely neat and more interesting. Um, and it's really great for when you don't have much time. I was literally playing it while we were waiting on Matt for the last podcast while he was in the car. That's um, why you said you couldn't. I knew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, Anthony was playing a game and I was like, why why won't you tell me what it is and he was like i can't tell you <laughs> <laughs> i can't tell you my dad will be mad <laughs> man it's, noita is such a wonderful experience and it, it, it's, it's really cool a, 
It's really cool. It's really it's really fun. The individual actions of the game are just fun to perform. Like you have a lot of things that you can like micro adjust and things like that. But then you have like overarching things that you can adjust from like a build type of level. And then you also have this world that feels straightforward and kind of single minded. But the more you press at the boundary, the more you figure out this world is has a story, has so much defined inside of it. Are you my, saying that you that Noita is just a two D Elden Ring? Yeah, it, 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 it honestly has similar types of qualities to a mm. Souls like, where the more you, the more it's kind of like a Hollow Knight. The more we talked about it very very early on in the podcast. Noita is one of those games that once you invest enough time into it, it pays back in dividends, where every little piece you put into it pays back in full. My turn. My turn. Go for it. Because exactly what Eric just said, unfortunately for people like me, is what turned me off. Yeah. Oh? For people like him and maybe you, Nat, you're like, oh, this sounds good. This sounds good. For me, I was like, I don't want to invest to enjoy something like no um for me it was knowing that you are a wizard it is a death simulator so you're gonna fucking die and it's gonna be hilarious and if you don't laugh well you need to learn how to laugh at yourself when you fail <laughs> and that's what it's teaching you there um builds is a thing that happens but you don't have to worry about it eventually you'll figure some stuff out and you'll learn some stuff and be like, oh, let's put this together and see how it works. Trial and error. And, and there's going to be a lot of error. You're going to blow yourself up and it's going to be funny. But also sometimes you're going to blow everybody else up and you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm a God. I'm killing everybody. I am an actual you wizard. Blow yourself up. <laughs> no one can stop me, you know? And, and, and that's what's exciting about it. And you might happen to figure out that there's a story, but that's not what matters for people like me. What matters is you killed everything. You got all the gold. You unlocked all the things. There's a giant boss that you destroyed. And it was easy because you're a god yourself. Like, So, Anthony. Yeah. Your description just now made me feel as if you are ascribing to the thought that as long as you have the biggest stick in a game, you are having a great time. Yeah. Anthony, now that you understand the mechanic, you understand how wands work. Yeah. I just want to explain something that is true. Oh, no. It'll blow your mind. Now, no. now that you have the mechanics, okay. you can make a wand that teleports you exactly where you want to be on the map. Really? So I have had a teleporty wand, which is fun. Like you being able to teleport wand. is great. You can have a wand and program it to teleport you exactly where you want. I will probably never figure that out unless it's an accident. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It, like the amount of stuff that you can program. That wand boxes, they look like little boxes. You can put spells in it. They work together. No, it's a computer language. So, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing that we haven't even talked about, which is hard to understand is that this game, the guy had to make a new engine just for this game. Yep. And it's for the right reason, not because of his ego, but because you can't make this game in another game. There is literally no game like this. I want him to anywhere. release that engine so badly as a so, like thing that you pay for or something yeah. because that engine is so cool. The Falling Sands engine is one of the coolest things. He has multiple GDC talks on it, and the way it works is so novel. So, but like base, Eric's like about as cry. as basic as possible. Every single pixel on the screen can interact with the other pixel, and those pixels can be whatever material. If it's water or lava or steam or oil, they will be able to interact with each other, and. So if you have like a spell where the first thing it hits, it turns that into a blast of gold and everything around it becomes gold. And you don't realize that there's a pixel of sand in front of you and you hit that and you immediately die because you just turned yourself into gold. <laughs> like that can happen. 
And so it's just neat because you'll be like, I can't get in there. And you're like, wait a second. What if I light that wood on fire? And you're like, oh, cool. Everything's burning now. Wait, whoa, step back. I don't want to burn. Like, it's just neat how everything actually interacts properly. It's, it's like when you're playing a first person shooter and you're like, I should be able to shoot that wall enough. Like it's the matrix that it falls down, but it doesn't, you know? And it's like, well, in this game, everything interacts. If you have the right tools, you can fuck it up. <laughs> I think a good way, it, it's so difficult for this game too, because I have had this experience. Anthony has had this experience. Day nine has had this experience. Every single one of the, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Every single one of us had an initial reaction that was super, super negative. A9 played this game for 10 hours straight on his first stream of it and hated it at the end of the day. And it's one of his top games. I played it and didn't play it again for like a year and a half. Dude, I've been and so annoyed by it. Games. That I'm like, every time Pirate Software is like, okay, community, vote on what game I play, and they choose Noida. I'm like, why? Like, I fuck this. Why would I wanna, they do this? To I don't want to put this stream on in the background anymore. But eventually, I was like, oh, what's, what's this happening about? back there? Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. Okay, that might be kind of fun. <laughs> it, is, it is one of those games where, unfortunately, the initial impression is weird. It's not bad, but it's weird. It is a weird first impression game. But it is, it, it, I think, like I said, it pays you back in dividends. The more time you invest in it, the more exponentially it gives back to you in interesting mm -hmm. mechanics and world and bites and all of these different things. I think it's because in the Dark Souls aspect, it is insanely challenging in the beginning, potentially. Yeah, it is it potentially is. the heart, like because it's random and raw right in the beginning. There's no, yeah. there's no guardrails. It is unforgiving in all aspects. Yeah, but it's definitely worth playing, and it's really cool. That's that's Push awesome. Forward. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to see your journey through Noita. It's gonna take like Aww, ten years. Look at him. <laughs> He's like a kid in a candy shop. It's it's. I mean, like the weird. thing is, I I see pirate software play this game. And he's playing it full time, basically as a full time streamer, and he hasn't uncovered the whole game yet. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's literally going to take me the rest of my life. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I Probably. think this game, if you were to what I would consider, a hundred percenting this game, which there is essentially a a playthrough that you have to do, and you have to do hundreds of playthroughs to do this. But I would argue that if you wanted to fully complete this game, which there is like an ending to it, you have to at least do four 40 hour plus runs. So if you were the best Noita player of all time for out, right out of the gate, you need at least five days of playing eight you're, hours at a time. You're at least doing 40 hours for one playthrough, 40 hours for another, 40 hours for another, and 40 hours for another. <laughs> Just to do the like 100%. But that's not how it works, right? Because you're not a perfect Noita player right out of the gate. So what you're actually doing is it's going to take you 180, 200 hours likely to do a playthrough that is the absolute bare minimum that has nothing to do with the interactions with the world or any of the stuff when you start poking at the bubble that surrounds your initial playthrough dude what's really cool and impressive is that pirate software has like the twitch integration set up oh yeah and that's so, so cool. his audience will vote on whether or not to like destroy him or try to help him and it's almost oh always like oh black holes start appearing yeah. everywhere yeah. destroy him of course but yeah. he's able to freaking survive it like all the time i'm like yeah how do you do this dude um into the lava oh, oh and by the way 60 percent off right now like That's you could insane. the thing is with especially with insane triple a prices right now being literally 10x this if not more you could play this game for hundreds of hours 
like a thousand hours and not discover everything and still have unique and fun and interesting experiences. And it's just like the greatest time in the world to be like, wow, this is an indie game. (laughs) Let me just put it this way. Let me let me put it this way. Value proposition, there is no better game in the market right now. So saying the ending video. Wait, what happened? Did I miss when it. When he dissolves the ceiling and it just crushes him. <laughs> yes, yeah, just right here. Him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It it is a wizard death simulator. Yeah, oh, it's so and cool. and I don't know what language it is, but Noida is actually female wizard. It is a witch death. simulator. I think simulator. it's Swedish. Swedish. Yeah, that yeah, sounds I right. Think it's Swedish. D- so, so you're actually a female wizard. Or there witch. is a secret in the game that has still not been solved. By the hardcore community as a whole. Not just one person. This game came out in 2024 or 2020. Early access has been around since 2018, I think, or 2019. There is a secret in this game that we know exists. We know it has a thing. Nobody has solved it in four plus years of like people, there are people in this community doing this, that this is like their hobby, trying to solve this room. Nobody (laughs) solved it. Oh, he made it through this time. (laughs) Oh, he did. You know, one of the weird things about this game might just be that it feels so much like Terraria or some other basic game. And you don't realize, because you haven't watched like these trailers that like, it's so much more. Yeah. It is so much. I, more. I'm watching it now and I'm like, yeah, this is intense. This is not what I thought Noida was. Right. Yeah. It's so it's so fun. I just I just love him peeing on the lava and walking across it. <laughs> and walking across it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. It it it's such a cool experience. There's a reason it's like number two on my list for my overwhelmingly my positive. Oh, That's I don't know. Not have easy it. to do. It is it is worth picking up if you haven't yet. I recommend it to everybody. It's worth it. There's worth a it. bundle. I wonder what that's about. It's got Baba is You and all the other knowledge based um, games that are kind of similar. Now those games aren't uh, the same aren't play style. They're not Noita, but they're all very good. Like Baba is You is there's, like top I mean, ten there's games of all literally time nothing like capable that. of being like Noida until someone yeah. else like makes an engine that can do the sort of thing or yeah, updates 100%. an engine to be able to do. The I sort hope. Of thing. I think it's called the Falling Sands engine um, that he developed. I really hope he releases that engine one day and allows other people to make games in this engine. Um. Because the engine, by the way, doesn't include the UI. It doesn't include the spells or anything like that. It is purely how the pixels interact with each other is the engine level stuff. And he has that as a separate code base, but he's it's private. He's never oh released my God. it to the public. But I hope he does one day. I saw this live the other day, and it was just barely on the screen here. There is like a feature right there. This looks like a skull of some giant bird in mm-hmm. this landscape. Mm-hmm. If you fill that eye with different materials, different things happen. Anthony, How would you ever know that? How would you ever think to do that? You would just be dicking around. You're like, I'm going to pour a bunch of lava in here. Maybe that one does nothing. Oh, I'm going to pour a bunch of invisible serum in here, whatever it's called, which makes you invisible if you touch it. Just wait until you figure out how to figure things out in the game. Wow. That's just, you blew my how brain. How to figure out how to figure things out. So now, well, what are you playing? Because Anthony said, how do you figure things out? I'm telling you right now, there's a way to figure out stuff in the game. There are ways to find mm-hmm. what's actually going on. Such a good game. So good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Matt, what have you been playing? Guys, you know I haven't been playing anything. PC right. building simulator. I've been yeah, building this fair. god dang PC. In fact, hold on, let me go ahead and hold on. One second. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't, Y'all, don't, don't break it. Nat sent us a text the other day. He's like, so I tried to turn it on. <laughs> it's not booting. Yeah, and I was like, no. That's rough life right there. And that his solution the was something thing. I've never heard of. He had to train the BIOS to learn the memory, to learn his RAM. I had to to train the RAM. 
Yeah, you have what? to prime. So, so back in the day, Anthony, this kind of happened, but it would like prime the memory. I guess now it's not as automatic. I'm not sure why. That looks pretty. That looks pretty. There's a mirror. Nat, can yeah, you nice. can you like hold it a little bit There's higher? There's many I can't mirrors. See the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just go ahead and like that. Like, what wait, is it attached it, to? Move it a what little is it bit in front to? of your face. Can you like hold it in front of your? Is that the umbilical cord? <laughs> <laughs> this is how PCs are made. Nat, if you could if you could hold that out with one hand, like out in front of you, so I can see it, that'd be that'd be wonderful. It's up. It's uh... <laughs> don't drop. <laughs> You're terrifying me, Eric. I'm so scared right now. It looks really pretty. To be I'm so oh, scared I can right see now. Eric in it. Yeah. Yeah. Was that me? Okay. That's it. <laughs> that's that's all you get. That's it's so shiny. Get. That was his workout of the day. You gotta polish those mirrors. Get those finger smudges off. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's. I've been working on that. Um, What's honestly, left to do? I pro it's there's the only thing that's left to do is to find. <laughs> I am literally at the last step, and I fumbled because I realized that we had done a major clean of the house, and I need a bootable version of Windows Matt, on a USB. Buy, buy a new Windows. You can't boot without the USB, Eric. Just buy a new one. <laughs> That requires me to buy it, Eric. Yeah, what's Nat? You're made of money now. You are now <laughs> an upscale rich person. That's back not, when, back when I needed a Windows key, there were ways to get it for like fifteen bucks, maybe ten. I mean, now even if though, even if we have the key, though, guys, even if we have the key, we have to put it on a USB, and I can't. I don't have a USB. I have USB. <laughs> Do you have a disc? <laughs> <laughs> I have a disc. It's you in this PC right, right now, here. but I don't have a DVD. Oh, no, I don't have a DVD drive. No. Yeah, I was about to say, I, didn't, I Wait, don't even it, put DVD drives you could in take, anymore. You, you, Fuck you, no. you, you temporarily plug that DVD drive into the new PC. <laughs> no, Anthony. <laughs> That's no. Funny. So, um, in order to boot from a windows drive i need a flash drive with the bootable windows file and i had one and i don't know where it is it's in the house somewhere that's what's that's what's so infuriating yeah, it's all here well you know what's crazy what's that how is it that motherboards uh -huh. aren't sold with an operating system on them with a tiny little chip of bootable storage that is like, oh, this is going to boot for Mac. It's going to boot for Linux. It's going to boot for Windows and you're paying for it right when you get it. Why do we still have to freaking jump through these hoops? Why can't you just buy a freaking motherboard? Probably something it? to do with the various amount of manufacturers and setting up deals with all of those manufacturers that they all agreed to at the same time and that they would sell for a single singular price on each mobile that they have and not upselling because it has that feature. Yeah. yeah. Did I just, did, did I, did I do the thing? I don't know. I'm just sad. Okay. Yeah. yeah me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. It just, so, it just feels like a weird thing. Yeah. It so, um, in order to, um, kind of vicariously live through the build that is living on my floor right now, not unpowered and just sad. Um, this is probably the smoothest build that I've ever gone through. Um, How was putting the PC or the CPU in? This one actually was super stress free because it's AMD, dude. It's a well, no, my last one no, was AMD. Legit. That was that was terrifying. Really? It's a, it's I thought the new AMDs. The new, it's AMDs. the new AMDs. The new AMDs. The the pins are yeah. on the Mobo. Not on the the CPU, which is and then of course they have a built-in socket. Freaking so duh. it has a two lock system now. It's essentially two factor authenticating your CPU, right? Yeah, you the orientation. Well, the yeah. orientation and everything. So they have a the orientation and the orientation grooves. and the yeah. grooves all have to match. 
So like, for example, if you were to put an Intel CPU into a motherboard that's made for AMD, you wouldn't, wouldn't even sit. be able to like pull the thing It wouldn't down. sit, yeah. So your, your CPU and your motherboard both would essentially be undamaged. Yeah. Right. Unless you, I mean, obviously you could like. You could definitely punch damage the thing it. down and You could it, definitely like, fuck it up. Yeah. You would know very quickly that it's like not going to work. Mm -hmm. Where, and nowadays it's just so nice how everything lines oh up. Oh my God, it's they, so nice. They have taken out pretty much everything except for the, the lead hooks on the um, motherboard itself are super simple now. Yeah. Which is really wild to me that they don't just put unique. Uh, identifying keys on each of those too but for example you could plug in like the lights and the leds and stuff like that the mm -hmm. indicator stuff on the mobo you could plug yeah. that in wrong additionally you can plug in like power not all the way if yeah. you don't like click it in if you the, don't the, actually the, hear the that latching chunk. thing mm -hmm. is still kind of old school but outside yeah. of that, almost everything else is really easy it's now. Really cool. Oh, wait, Nat, way. you had like a weird thing that both of us were like, what is that? Was it like a guide to plug things in? So, yeah, I had a guide where I could run the headers from um, the actual case into a bracket, and the bracket would go straight into the board into the, uh, I guess, 24 pin header. In like the bottom right of the of the mobo or wait wasn't it like the ones with like the power button mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. and like power button usb like is that weird sorry, one power, power button and power that was it to, to me it's that weird one where you have to like take a bunch of little tiny single mm -hmm. wires and mm -hmm. usually try to hopefully get it in the right spot but you had like a shroud where you could put yeah. them in already and then put them all in at once and yeah, know they're in the right pretty spot. much that's pretty cool. yeah yeah it locked in and like was like super easy like you didn't nice. have to worry about like making sure that you were lining it up with the right um two pins to uh be connected with the right part of the um mobo and everything it was super smooth and then also i didn't realize that um cases these days don't even use those headers anymore what? Like they consolidate all of that into like if you're you, like all the USB 2.0s and 3.0 um, um, leads from the actual case, yeah, go in through one single cord into the Mobo. Really? No, yeah, they're, they're, it was. So you don't like, have like oh I have to use up my second and third and no. fourth USB port on the motherboard thing. There's so much of everything nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So wow. like this thing right here, I uh, can't point to it because this is in the way. Anyway, this cord right here, whoop, this cord right here basically constitutes all of the headers that wow. come off of the top of the, of the, of the CPU. I don't have to worry about doing anything down here. Dude, much. like, cause I like, I still have an old PC here that, I'm pretty sure I have USB 3.0 ports on the case that are definitely USB 2.0 because I like ran out of 3.0s or it couldn't reach yeah. it with the cable. So I had to like plug it into USB 2. I think this is the first time that I actually have a MOBO that matches the generation of case that I have. That's cool. Yeah. So um, all that to say, I'm really stoked to actually boot this thing up and actually use it i just i'm so scared <laughs> that, you got that. i'm so scared that i'm going to actually like get it all um uh, working and then i'm gonna have no time to play games that's the oh. scariest thing for me honestly It'll like i'm eventually gonna have more time but uh the games that i'm putting on my list to like play once i actually have this game obviously elden ring um I'm going to try and play a From Software game. I heard that uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree is insanely hard. And it's like too hard. And to that, I say, I thought the base game was too hard. <laughs> so it can only get worse. Um, there was a game that I was interested in called uh, Nine Souls, which is like a parry based, um, not roguelite. What was it called? It's a parry-based parry uh, Metroidvania-styled game 
that was on Steam, and it was like it, the aesthetic was really cool to me. So I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. Um, graphics wise, will definitely not challenge the system. Um, Raven's Watch is after that, as well as No Rest for the Wicked, because I saw some cutscenes from No Rest for the Wicked in in Studio Moon are flossing on people. I've I've never seen that style before. It's At cool. that fidelity, too, it's yeah. so stupid. Like I can't believe that that's the level of graphics right now. Like it's cool. it's like a comic book comes straight to life. So crazy. I, I literally um, just got goosebumps remembering one of the scenes. Yeah, yeah. it's it's insane. Like how, how do the people who made Ori in the Blind Forest go from Ori to this? Yeah. That's mind boggling. That's that's a mind fuck for it, me. It's not even in even not even cutscenes. No, in it's game. not. It's in game. In game things Dude. will do it too. Yeah. Dude. Anyway, uh, I want to probably try and finish Control, but I heard that it ends badly, so I might skip that one. Um, I, think I got pretty I far. I think it's still worth going through it. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm trying to go down my list to see. Up. Uh, I'm gonna, obviously going to try and actually beat Hades eventually because i only got like i got like 20 runs in and then like life happened so i had to stop playing but um let's see i don't think i have anything else on my list Uh, i would like to know people's like suggestions based on like the games that they love right now that require like a high-end graphics card or just like a, a medium graphics card because i've been living in the stone ages for the past 10 years um <laughs> i mean if you want a but, suggestion my game of the week noida no i i okay i have one game. We'll, we'll we'll get to yeah. you <laughs> we'll get to you but um yeah i i probably will try and play a little bit more v rising we'll see uh i will definitely not be picking up warframe uh i may try destiny just to go ahead and like have some good times but from what i've heard they had one really good expansion and then immediately after it came out with the season that was pretty much doing the exact same thing from before so i probably won't go ahead go back to my favorite gun game and just accept that it will never be the same so reason, yeah, when you say gun game, I think of one of Eric's old favorites with mm-hmm. the automatons and the girls near automata. Near automata, yeah. That's a good I pr- I should probably play that because I've been told multiple times to play that in Disco Elysium. Near automata, it, it, it it's a weird one. Uh, play that game <laughs> until oh. it uh, uh, until it is fully done. It's kind of interesting but it'll so i've heard it'll let you know but yeah i've heard it is my favorite game of all time so oh okay good to know oh and the last one um blast blue entropy effect it looks like a cool roguelike that does look cool i've been i i have that on my list as well but my computer would actually probably go up in flames if i tried to play it oh um before i go ahead and pass the baton Eric um, and Anthony, I don't know how to set up both my PCs to run at the same time. For duels PC streaming? Yeah. The easy way is with a capture card. The hard way is with like yeah. network digital interface, what NDI plugins what and stuff. PC yeah. has to have the graph- the capture card in it. The you want the capture card to be on the, the on the bad PC. Yeah. So, okay, the good so PC the is what you want to game on, and you want only gaming to be happening on that. And then you stream okay. that out of an HDMI into the capture out card of the... out into and the because capture card. Because it's using card. a capture card, there's literally nothing happening on the gaming PC. What if I'm yeah. using the gaming PC to like do like Discord and stuff? Like Discord or and or like music or something. Still fine. You can out the the audio. You just need to pre mix it before. Because whatever your capture card gets from audio is also going to be what it gets as a full audio stream. Mm, so you won't what I'm get hearing is, audio stream. Okay, so what I'm hearing is for streaming that kind of stuff, it well, is going to be through the capture card and through selective routing of audio. But if I were to want to be able to switch from running my PC, my, my work PC versus my fun pc i would have to get a hub 
that I could switch the USB, the mm. HDMI uh, no, feeds of my monitors. No, I, I don't think so. I think, honestly, you would probably put Discord on the streaming PC. Let me rephrase. Because the audio is going to come I from I want the game to be too. able to use the gaming PC to do the things that I enjoy, which is music production and gaming, period. Mm-hmm. Right? So when I am doing music and or gaming, I want to be on that PC. And I want to be able to push a button that's, that switches me over to my other PC that handles all of my work and or the grunt work of streaming I on see. that PC. Push a button for your keyboard and mouse. And that switches the actual monitor feed between the two PCs. There you probably need like so, a nice, yeah, yeah, I need a splitter. A splitter is the easiest way a because there splitter. aren't a lot of monitors. Funnily enough, I think Anthony and I have the only monitors that do that by default. I think every other, most other monitors have to have a splitter. Even ours doesn't do it well. You have to use specific ports. Yes. Yeah. Ours doesn't even do it well. And ours is like the only one in the market that has that as a selling point. Cool. So. I will look into a hub later. But now the, the other option is like a cheap 70 to $100 like portable laptop or uh, monitor for the for the PC that's yep. just doing the other crap. No, I want to be able to switch between the two because this will be this will be the, my official like the goal is to make this as livable as possible. And I think the only way to make this as livable as possible is to incorporate some form of easy button that I press that switches between one PC and the other. If I can't do that, then it's not worth it. So that's my goal. I'll figure it out whenever I get to the point. In the meantime, I will jerry rig the, uh, the gaming PC as a feed into the um, capture card. <sighs> as f- at, mm, one last question, can you get content from your capture card to be displayed to two screens? Yeah. Like to both of your monitors? Yeah, if you wanted to. I thought it could only feed into like some form of capture, some kind of uh, streaming uh, platform. No, you can mirror it wherever you want. It works similarly to any other display output that windows has on okay. your capture card okay. the weird thing is that and i had to do this i can't remember why but you can have like two ports come off your graphics card and they're mirroring each other so you can have a usb or sorry what am i saying jesus christ hdmi and display port going completely separate places and they're outputting the same thing with no extra overhead yeah mm-hmm. it's just a graphics card thing yeah. Interesting. Um, Interesting. It gets weird and complicated, and I don't know if it's worth it. Mm, fair. I mean, the PC that I that I'm building probably could stream and play a game at the same time. So it can. We'll see. It can. It's just. I would rather offset that so that I wouldn't have to run into any struggles. Yeah. Anyway, Eric. Yeah, mine's mine's going to be super straightforward. straightforward. Uh, I have just put in, you know probably 20 to 30 more hours into Elden Ring. Uh-huh. Elden Ring has been life. Um, it is <laughs> just as amazing as people say it is. Probably one of yep. the best open world RPG style Dark Souls games that there is. There are some interesting notes um, mm-hmm. that I, I am trying to quantify. I think maybe... I, I still have some more into the game to go before I think I fully settle on my thoughts. But I think okay. maybe next episode or the episode after, I'm going to I'm going to give a full breakdown of like things that I don't like versus things that I like. I have not gotten to the DLC yet. I have a few great runes under my belt. And I've done a lot of cool fights. The Radon fight is insane. Um, but it is. I've seen. I've only seen videos, but yeah, it's insane. The Radon fight's insane. I found 
So I'm probably going to change my build. So I've been doing a faith build. I'm probably going to respec, which you do have the ability to respec in mm -hmm. in this one, which is really cool. Um, I'm probably going to respec because I found this sword that is intelligence, faith, scaling. And essentially, it has two special abilities. One to shoot a giant moonbeam and another one to create a flame tornado. And it seems so cool. Uh, such an interesting con concept. Are you playing the expansion yet? Do you have to beat pretty much every? Yeah, you have to beat everything uh, first because you okay. have to. Just beat a, sure. you, no spoilers here. You have don't to listen. beat a certain don't boss. Don't listen to me. Then and it's pretty don't late in the me. game before you get yeah. the DLC. Something like ten percent of the people on Steam, or two percent. It's some insane number of people on Steam have actually beaten the boss to do the DLC. More people <laughs> have the DLC, then there are people who have access to the DLC. <laughs> the game's hard, guys. Sorry, rewind a little. I thought we all learned from Diablo 2 that tornadoes never work. Dude, this tornado's freaking <laughs> insane, man. But yeah, I'm probably going to respec in, into I think we learned a, that from a D3. split between intelligence and faith. There are so many cool mechanics in... Elden Ring that are just really, really interesting. Um, there are some things that I've started to notice. I I don't know if they'll be the norm, though. I, I'm less than halfway through the game still, I think. I'm very thorough in like exploring and like looking for things. So I'm probably going to have a much longer first playthrough than like the average player who just like goes straight to the herd tree and like goes for the great runes and just calls it a day but there are some interesting things that i have noted that i i, I don't think i have quantified yet fully and articulated i haven't articulated them in my head well enough but i think either next week or the week after when i'm much closer to like completing the base game and starting maybe even to get into the dlc I want to see their trends if they continue with some things that I saw or kind of keep down the, the really great things that I've seen. So, okay. but it, it is really, I mean, even, even so well worth the money. It is definitely amazing. Um, I haven't gotten to the DLC yet, so I can't make any claims about any of the new content yet. I have seen none of it. You have to be very deep in the game for anybody who's like joining us this week and hasn't seen the last episode. I waited to start the whole game until the DLC came out purposefully because I wanted to experience all of it together all at once and kind of like one full playthrough and like he fresh. wanted the full Miyazaki experience. Yeah. So I haven't looked anything up. I haven't been spoiled on anything. I'm experiencing this story and the world and the combat and all the bosses are kind of like first time never seen them before at all, which has been uh, just a delight. So it's been really cool. Quick question. Yeah. Is there a fast paced build for this game? Every yes. fast, ev a lot every, of the builds every build is are fast. very fast paced. The combat in this yeah. is not as, this is a much faster paced combat than any of the previous uh, Dark Souls games. There were a few weapons, but honestly, so many of the weapons are fast paced in this game. However, they are super punishing still. So you can play yep. as fast paced as you want. But you better be good. You you better be good for some of them, depending ah. on what they are. Um, but the fact here's the thing: this game does such a good job of risk and reward. So your fast pace like ninja build can destroy if you time your fast pacedness right. Backblades, babe. Yeah, like there is a build. There is specifically a build that I could see happening where essentially you play as Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Like, I have the full outfit from him that increases, like, thunder damage and all these things, and, like, two quick daggers and, like, a lightning spear. And I'm not doing it, but I could see how you could play a fast-paced lightning ninja that, like, mm -hmm. dances around, tele like, does all this stuff and is, like, super fast-paced. And I'm not... I'm only, like... 40% into the game. So that's relatively early. But even before then, I've seen fist builds. I've gotten fist weapons that are like really fast. I've gotten 
daggers and have you already bought the dlc then i did because i just got it okay so, like, yeah that's, i think that's access to the fist weapons okay no, no, no. There were fist weapons in the base game. There were fist weapons yeah. before. Because oh, one of the know. one of the bosses actually drops a fist weapon, and then you have the um, there is a holy weapon that you can get super early in the game. That is a fist holy lightning thing that like sticks out of your hand. Hmm. Interesting. You know this game and um, what was the other one that no we were rest playing? For the that, wicked. Yes, no rest for the wicked. They both do, I'm sure, great jobs of this, but at the very beginning of executing the game, they'll do like an intro cinematic. And that, for me, is the worst time to do it. Because I didn't get to play uh, Elden Ring the other day because of how long it took to start the game. Uh, That's fair. I ran out of time. You could skip the cinematics, ma'am. Cinematics. I tried. I was yeah. not allowed to skip it. You, you can't skip that first one. You I cannot. Wow. You can skip and it. And that's one of those things where it's like, but. let me play first and then show me the thing. And the best time to show someone the thing is after they have something that's very intense. So, that's fair. yeah. It, it, this, it, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but that is a staple of the Dark Souls genre. They always give you the kind of rundown history video right at yeah. the beginning. And it's usually about five minutes long. And that just feels like movie first, not game first. That's fair. That's fair. It's true. I but think it's they for should, the, it's I for think the they should nerds. show that after the tutorial. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I've kind of yeah. gotten used to it because I've been playing them for so long. But I, I agree wholeheartedly. I don't see why they don't do the tutorial. Just throw you right into the it, tutorial because every Dark Souls game has like a fighting tutorial level where you right, go it's, through it's, this it, thing. Well, it's really weird. It's just like the whole music thing we were talking about earlier when I couldn't make a music track. It's like you go from a really intense video to suddenly you're Walk nothing. You don't know what to do. How do you yeah. move? It's like it's just yeah. intense. Annoying. Nothing. I agree. It's I agree. And I think Dark Souls and Elden Ring and all of these games have it set up so well where they do a tutorial level that essentially ends in a boss. And right after the boss, you always have a transition thing that occurs that takes you to the actual start of the game. And that should lead into the five minute history lesson right after yes. you beat the boss. I, That'd be perfect. I 100% agree. Because every Dark Souls game and Dark Souls like game has that. And it's just such a perfect time to be like, get them through the tutorial, have them face that first boss, and then have a moment of relaxation now that they're invested, where they watch this opening cinematic that tells you the history of this world. Because there's it's like a huge history. There's like a lot there, and it's very dense and it's very slow. And you got the old girl who's like there was once Medica the Great who stole the Elden Ring and became immortal. You know, and it's like, it's like, that's really cool. And for some people that works, but Body here's video. the thing, for the people that doesn't work, it kind of puts them off right at the start. But for the mm-hmm. people that it does work for, they won't Slaps. care about going through the tutorial and then yeah. having that occur either. So like True. just putting it after the tutorial literally makes no difference to the game. It only There's people who've been better. playing from software games for a very long time and know what it is that, that they're going into. Yeah. They're aware of the fact that they're going to have to go ahead and watch probably a 30 yeah. minute cutscene. Well, I mean, not like, 30 minutes. It's that's something an exaggeration. that you live you know with. I, mean. I don't think it kills the game, but at the same time, I agree wholeheartedly that it just makes it better if you put it after the tutorial. So it's like, I mean, it, it literally killed it for me. I was looking forward to playing. I haven't played it. <laughs> that's unfortunate. You will shut up if I'm lucky. Yeah, maybe okay. in a year. I think you it's will. Really good. I think whenever me and Eric start playing it, you'll be like, well, when's, when's this game I'm, out? I'm in, Matt. You better go in, the, yeah, go in the frame. Yeah. I'm I really, so I saw some builds where like people summon these magical weapons that are pretty much just like gigantic hologram versions of actual weapons. And I was like, that's so anime. I love it. Dude, there are <laughs> some anime play. builds, man. Yeah, but I also heard that a lot of the a lot of that becomes irrelevant once you hit uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. 
I don't think so. I, I obviously I'm not there, so I can't make a good justification. I've seen some boss fights, Eric. I, I haven't, I haven't seen any boss fights yet, but it's, I don't know. I think this game and all of the Dark Souls games have an exploration and item forward mechanic. And I think Shadow of the Erd Tree, from what I've heard and read, is that people don't like interacting with those mechanics. And so they haven't done it on most games. Mm. And then when they actually get to things that need you to interact with the full breadth of mechanics in the games, they just don't do it. And then they get railed. And it's like, <laughs> you did not use everything at your disposal. You didn't use the items that help you with this. You didn't yeah. use the the things that coat your arm. You didn't help spend with any of your you soul. Oh, sorry, any of your uh, any resources yeah. to try and kill this boss. You just tried to be better than the boss. And there the are some than you. bosses where you can do that, especially when they're not new. Like people are going to learn the Shadow of Erd Tree, like hands down, and then speedrunners are going to teach you mechanics, and then people are going to like one shot these bosses with like glitches and things like that that's gonna happen and, and then then people are gonna be like oh it's hard but it's not it's whatever you'll get past it it's not hard but like when you're first going through some of these games if you go in truly blind you need to use the resources that are given to you and mm -hmm. i i have watched multiple streams where i see people i've been trying this boss for two hours I'm, I'm going to try 63 and i don't see them use any items or try to like do anything to help their in chances with this boss and like they don't try to learn what the boss is actually doing they don't try to like work with the elemental weaknesses versus strength they don't actually try to play the game they just try to be better at executing the controller and that's well good that's that's kind of what i was getting at earlier they're trying to ride the bike better they're not looking at upgrading the bike because that's not intuitive their bike for a lot of people. Their bike but here's the works. Thing. And here's where Elden Ring is so good. Elden Ring's design inherently tries yeah. to show you how to improve the bike. Elden Ring as a game doesn't teach you how to ride the bike better. You're They already know that you're going to do that. Every single mechanic in Elden Ring literally shows you Oh, you can improve your bike here. Oh, this will help you improve your bike. Oh, but this will help you. What do I'm this. getting at is that there's people like me who don't care about that. When For I sure. was playing Witcher 3 specifically, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I could use game. potions and I would be able to take on this beast better. I don't want to worry about the potions. I just want to go fight the beast. And V Rising is the first game where to. I'm like, oh, if I go and fight this boss, I know I'm not as strong as it. It's going to be harder. But if I just grab these two potions, this time it's worth it. And there was something that they did differently that made me be like, yeah, mm. I'm going to go and do the potions. Maybe it was because they already had the sorting and everything was there and set up for me. I didn't have to go in and do the extra work in like Witcher 3 and be like, okay, what ingredients do I need? Who do I need to talk to? Where do I need to go and build it? It's like, no, the game already encouraged you to store it in here to have a room dedicated to it. And so it's like, oh, there's, you've already eliminated all the friction. I can just make the potion and go and beat this boss without getting the better equipment. I think but other games don't do that. There's friction there and I don't want to engage in it. I'm the just problem like, with that ideology is that the friction that is that in Elden Ring is literally what makes it more special as a game because that friction isn't friction. It leads to interesting gameplay. Yeah, but my but the inclination, like the what is it? The first impression, the thing that people already expect about that type of mechanic is already low. Yeah. That's yeah. Fair. They, they if, yeah. If, if if Elden Ring was the first game to ever introduce any of that stuff ever, maybe it would work. I think, Anthony, though, that your your observation is absolutely correct. Eric's is too. I think what we need to keep in keep in mind is that these games are not intended for every single player. Yeah. They are not. I cannot suggest to my 
13 year old cousin to pick up a from software game because they they're they're either either they're going to be a savant and be amazing at it or they're going to never touch this kind of game again because i've scarred them for life because that because the game is not intended for anybody to have their hand held obviously but from what i've heard the best way that these games are experienced is almost like a book club where oh yeah you go and you encounter that boss and then you go and talk to someone about it Mm -hmm. and they're like yeah dude this was crazy and then you just have that moment of shared like struggle and it helps you process it yeah and without that which is hard to come by for a lot of people Mm -hmm. like if you're in school if you're in high school and college yeah you randomly see someone you're all playing the game at the same time it's great Mm -hmm. the three of us we talk to each other all the time We've known each other for a long time, but we don't have those moments to be like, dude, did you beat that boss? Wasn't True. that nuts? Because like, we're all freaking Apex gamers. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you. I mean, I'm I'm of a higher pedigree, and I have a feeling that just everybody in this call is. So, I mean, okay. Just, what I meant was we don't have time to talk about it. We don't have time to be fair. like, remember that boss that we played in V Rising? Like that happened like once. True. True. <laughs> but there's I will how say many that bosses? That was, I was, I'm, yeah. That game did kind of trigger the whole like, well, how did you tackle this boss? Because I, yeah. keep, I keep on getting molly whopped. And, yeah. and, and that's why I keep saying for like ev- so many games that come out, V Rising, Valheim, I'm like, these games for people like us, we need D and D session style plays of it Mm. where we play together at the same time and thus we're able to actually experience it and share the experience together because it's if we experience it separately so much shit's gonna happen in real life that we're never gonna be like bro did you get through that one boss i i think the evolution because i i hear you i think that's like a a great mindset of saying that hey we have these we already have these archetypes of gaming where groups of people come around and tackle a very hard activity. Even if it's not like together, we are both share. We are sharing in the uh, aspect of in the struggle. So I think that the next step, if I was to go ahead and take into consideration this activity and be like, well, how would I solve it? I would say that the next step would be making an Elden, well, making a from software game that is based on a multiplayer uh, platform. Like, I think that is probably your easiest way to make sure that some, like, you're right. Strictly, sorry, not multiplayer, strictly multiplayer. Like, you have to play this with multiple people. There's no way to to pursue the game without being pushing forward in multiplayer but that is also extremely exclusive to the game the society social circle of gaming because there's a lot of people who play games alone i played destiny yeah. 2 alone for like years so like i i know that there are tons of people out there who will never pick up a game who will never be able to pick up a game and then be excited to like sit down with their friends and try and tackle a single but dude, the re- uh, boss the reason i think you're right is because in that moment even though you're playing alone but you had to play with other people to do this one thing mm-hmm. they might not be your friends that you play games with every now and then or all the time but you for a moment have that like holy shit good game we did it good job i don't know who you are but thank this, you this you literal friendship life. is based on that anthony yeah. so shut up wait what <laughs> this, this entire friendship, friendship is, is this that. friendship is based yeah. on that feeling so shut up <laughs> <laughs> well i'm saying that y- you get that thing with random strangers and that's the beauty of online multiplayer games i think the beauty of multi i i, I agree i think there is a definite beauty to uh online multiplayer games i think that though they can be exclusive that the benefits far outweigh the down the downsides and if i were a branch of the from software team that was allowed to develop anything 
right now with the fidelity and the depth of uh, detail that Elden Ring brings to the forefront, I would probably bring to the forefront a raid-based Elden Ring game. Cool. That would be cool. Well, on that uh, promising note, I'm I we're gonna discuss Elden Ring more next week probably. I got, <laughs> I got a lot to go. <laughs> I'm going to be playing it for a while. It, it's I'm probably good. going to be playing it hopefully in the next uh, month or two. It's on your month PS5. Or two. Oh, no, no, Not yeah. on your new PC. On my PS5. On PC, oh my probably, God. That's so, that'd be so disappointing. I heard, that, did they fix that um, before know. we sign off? Did they fix that? No. I don't know if they've fixed the stuttering issue yet. I'm, I, at this point, I'm invested. Uh, I'm and and before we sign off, Nat, we learned last time that don't hang up right away. The whole oh. like not hanging up right away when we say bye is actually important because yes. I apparently destroyed Riverside. Oh, well, I don't know. So far, this episode seems to have run perfectly. Uh, with that said, River, if you like the way this looks, you like the way everything looks, Riverside uh, Lincoln is in the below. Uh, last episode was rough. Riverside, I'm talking to your guys. Like, get on your shit. Everything needs to be as it was this episode and the episode two weeks ago. Last episode was a shit show. Can't let it happen it too many times. I only shared get my screen like once because I was afraid to break oh everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so traumatized. far, this episode seems to have worked perfectly from everything I've seen. Um, but... The whiskeys were good. We're hoping the free range stuff comes in. The whiskeys so were episode... good. He forgot about the few oh, whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I like to think of better times. Next week, we might have the Frey Ranch if they get it in. So we're excited to see you in the next one, guys. Subscribe, like below, comment. Tell us new games to play, what st- things are on sale that you enjoy, and let us know what whiskeys to try. And we'll see you next week. Bye.